What's up? Uh, well, wait. Before we start, I'm going to start the podcast off right here. There we go. I can't. <sighs> there, now. Well, How's good, you going, brother? Good, brother. Good. I'm, uh, I'm right here with you, my man. See, I need to switch to the hard stuff because the old, uh, the beer's uh, making the dad bod a little bigger than it needs to be. <laughs> uh, I, I'm telling you, the vodka keeps you keeps you nice and healthy. It's potatoes. You're good. No, I heard that. So, like a lot of people, when I used to do the whole bodybuilding thing, it was only like vodka, water, and mio. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I don't care how I look anymore. I'm married with a kid. If I want to have I got a fucking Mike's hard fuzzy peach over here. Getting a little a little sweet tooth tonight, right? Listen, bud, you already did all the hard work. You got the <laughs> ring, got the girl, so you can you can let it all let it all go, you know. Got got the six pack, got the wife, and then just started putting on the pounds. <laughs> you got your you know, you're a dad, it's you get free passes with shit like that. It's like that uh the Dave Chappelle line. He's like, Got you bitch. <laughs> I got the ring on it, you ain't going nowhere now. <laughs> no, I, tell, but, uh, I tell Erica all the time, I'm like, you know, I hope you're happy with what you got because I ain't going anywhere. Well, I just hide all the pens on the wife so she can't sign the divorce paper, so we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Pens are not allowed in the house. How was work? How was work? Work was uh Work was good, long, long but good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, weekends working is always uh, shitty, but uh, we're ending it off on a fucking high note with this podcast, and uh, I have two more work days until uh, me and Diesel Dilly hit the road for Ontario, so the rest of the week I think is going to fly right by. Yeah, when do you guys leave? Uh, we're leaving... I leave here Wednesday night at 4 p.m., and I pick Dylan up in Paggy's Cove at 5 p.m., and then we leave from his place and drive straight through the night until we hit Peterborough, Ontario, and uh, we're going to crash at a hotel whenever we get there, or if they're booked, we'll sleep in the truck because there is that uh, the big power sports show going on down there, but uh, then we'll wake up, go to Peterborough Power Sports. Everybody yep. always talks about that down there, so it would be nice to see the store, you know? Yep. And then uh, hopefully meet up with some people from Instagram, have some drinks, have a good dinner, and go to bed early, wake up, and then head over to XM Army's place to start partying with everybody. So uh, she's going to be a quick a quick week. I'm so excited for everything. It's uh, I, I hope it's going to fly by. I mean, the, I, I, I think I think the trip is going to be amazing, right? I think it's going to be a good time. Um, I know. I, I wish you could have made it, man, because we had room for one more bike. You know. Like, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, so I was at I was at James's place last night, or not last night, the night before, and uh, my my rad fan. The reason I haven't been going much is my rad fan is just it's toast. Um, I'm waiting for my buddy to get me the whole rad relocate with the XMR bumper and all that stuff. So, so hopefully that's coming soon. But I wouldn't want to be over there <laughs> overheating and. And all that i'd want to be full send or no send you know what i mean yeah i know and we last time we went out with you we were on the side of the highway and like your bike just would not yeah. cooperate with you man and that wasn't yeah. even going hard like we were stopping a lot that day right yeah and i mean the amount of water and and stuff that was there that day as well like and i couldn't keep the temperature down so i'm like i've, I've made the decision i've made the decision cody that i'm not playing with this bike anymore it time to rip it down and build it back up and and get it so that so that i'm not not enjoying myself anymore you know what i mean yeah i mean that's what my rad fan was like until i like i mean i just went and got a a piece of shit one from a, a junkyard and the the big it was just it was such a big difference i don't know what happened oh i know what happened to my rad i dumped bile salt on it i left it sit there for an hour and then it destroyed my rad yeah. So don't do that if you use the bile salt product that I give you. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And by the way, that is like, that is the ATV owner's fucking holy grail is what that is. It I'm, is, unless you're stupid with it. I used to just well, glug, 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 glug all over the rat and just watch it bubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I'm telling you, it's good for chickens and it's good for can ams, man. That's right. Chickens yeah. and can ams. That's, that's how I roll. <laughs> 100%, baby. 
But I apologize for the setup tonight. I'm not sitting behind the bars because my bike is at double D detailing diesel dillies. Yeah. I'm going that's... over it with a fine tooth comb, getting it all nice and purdy for the trailer trailer ride. So uh, just sitting at a desk in the shop, but uh, it'll do. You, you caught me on the fourth floor of my apartment. Uh, <laughs> To the whole world out there, no, I don't live with my bike, unfortunately, you have said. But soon. Yeah, and I, I would do it in the house. I w it would have saved me a lot of time, like, doing the Wi-Fi extender and running cables and stuff. But I like to drink, and I like to smoke, and I'm not, yeah. that, I'm not a person that smokes in the house because I don't want nicotine dripping off the walls. And I got a kid in the house, so 100%. shop is where it's at. Shop is where uh, the dad can be a... Uh, free from any yeah. children and wives and i love them to death but uh free time is nice <laughs> it's the man zone bro yeah it's 100 percent the man zone so red devil let's uh let's start out by telling the people uh who you are your name what you do for a living all right uh i'm blaze jones uh blaze leo randall jones it's my full name uh i'm a longshoreman and the Port of Halifax, which I know nobody knows what the hell that is. Uh, I move containers. I help move containers every day. And we move a lot of them. Um, I've been doing it for about, fuck, I don't know, for at least four or five years now, almost. Um, I've been in the union now for a year. And, uh, and it, you know, it's changed my life. It's changed my family's life. It's, uh, uh, it's, been, it's been a crazy couple of years, man. I do want to jump in for a second. So... A lot of people will know your job just by there's a mission on Grand Theft Auto. We have to pretend to be a worker at a shipyard. You drive, you drive the front end loader. I've played yeah. it a hundred percent. So Blaze, Blaze is the guy in that see through floor, and yeah. then he just picks up the big shipping containers and then places them. So like <laughs> that. I mean, we've all played that game pretty much. So. I mean, you're living the dream of like, that was a fun mission, man. Yeah. Like, and you're living that every day, getting paid good money to do it. So uh, kudos yeah. to you for uh, doing what you love. No joke. When I, when I played that mission, actually, I was shitting my pants the whole time. I was like, literally, I'm trying to get there and I'm already doing it in the game. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was, it was, it's a, it's a wicked job, man. It's, it's a lot of long hours. Like I know yourself, you, you're like on call 24 seven, right? Yeah. Yeah, like I, I'm not so much on call, but they can they can work us kind of. There, there's new rules put in place, so I, I can't really say a lot about it. But they kind of like to work you around the clock, so it's it's a super busy job. You know, we're we're shipping everything from potatoes to big screen TVs or what? Who knows what could be in? Yeah, in who, who nobody knows what's really in those containers. No, Let's be no. honest. Now there could be a family of four from Taiwan. We don't fucking. <laughs> We just move them. <laughs> just moves them. You know, we welcome to Canada, bud. <laughs> yeah, bang. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but imagine that job. Uh, if you work more hours than you're supposed to, you get overtime and shit, don't you? Oh yeah. So like, your 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 straight time Monday to Friday, let's say eight to five, uh, and then like after five, it's like time and a half, um, and then like weekends, Saturdays are like time and a half and then Sundays are like double time and stuff like that so it's 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 one of the in Nova Scotia at least like in Halifax unless you've got like a big a big diploma and you know you spent 12 years in frigging college or whatever university you it's <clears throat> best paying and most freedom you can get from a job and, and that's the thing like a lot of people that I'm not going to say everybody. A lot of people that go to university, they kind of look down on people who don't go get a mm -hmm. higher education. It's like, okay, what are you going to do with your $20,000 arts degree in fucking Halifax? Like, the, the trade guys, you can see that they're the ones making the money and they're the ones who work their bag off all day and they're not living with their fucking parents when they're no, almost 30 years old. So, I mean, there's a, there's some give and take. It's all what you want to do with your life. But uh, I'm I'm happy with my profession. I mean, I went... I went to police school for a year and tried it out, hated it. Now I'm a chicken farmer, so it's uh, – shit happens, right? Listen, man, I, 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 I don't hate on anybody as long as they're feeding for the family. You know what I mean? Um, as long as they're putting food on the table and they're doing exactly what they need to do. 
but uh, I, I did the trades. You know, I, I, I have a, I have a, a CNC machinist uh, I took at uh, NSCC, and and I didn't do anything with it. You know, it's uh, it was just one of those things that I took it because I thought, you know, it makes the most money out of all the trades coming out of school. And, you know, I, I hated it. So it was like, why, why continue to pursue it if I'm not going to enjoy it, right? Like, I'm a firm believer of if you enjoy your job, it's not really work. Do you know what I mean? And they don't really push that in school either, which kind no. of ticks no. me off. Like, there's like a few kids that go in the co-op classes that actually get to go out and do some trade work and, and learn how to do it. But they're, they really push that university getting the degree. And, I mean, there's not that many hardworking – I'm not going to say that. There's a lot of still hardworking blue collar guys out there, but uh, I feel like it keeps getting more pushed to the side as the years go on. Yeah, I, I don't want to get too tinfoil hatty, but you know, I almost feel like at least our public school systems are pushing them more towards going and getting that university degree. But maybe it's just me, but it's more for like the money, like you know. The, the high schools are kind of like, you know, you get grants and you get, uh, uh, I don't even know what they're called now, where you get like money from, from the government or whatever to go to university or whatever like that. But I mean, the trades guys, they go in and they come out with, let's say 30 grand in debt from, from their, for their, from their, their college. And that's probably on a low end. Um, you go to university and you're coming up with like almost a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Like who can, who can pay that back and then still, you know, make a living for themselves so I, I give up, I, I give up big prop to the, to the guy that goes to trade school and oh, does, no. does something like that. Oh, I'm losing you. Oh, you're starting to come back. You're back. You're back. You're still circling. Am I? Yeah. You went all crazy on that one, bro. You still have a circle going around your face. Do I? Yeah. I, I'm saying all, I got all bars of Wi-Fi right now. So do I. I might have to look into, like, Zoom or some shit, but I like having it on Instagram. Yeah. You can still hear me and all that, though, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you're still circling, but uh, you're moving good. And, like, in the comments, you guys, uh, do we both look good right now? Like, who's more choppy? What's he's trying to figure out what's happening? What's happening right now? Looks like your missus is saying that I'm good. Yeah, and your uh, my lifter said uh, you're good. What about me? Am I am I good? Both are good on viewers' end. Okay. Whatever. I guess I guess we're gonna have to have a little circle. And as long as I don't look crazy, then whatever. It's all good. No, no. It's just like a tiny little gray or I see your face and everything. It's just I don't okay. understand. Uh, it happened to me in Dilly too, but it didn't come back for me in Dilly, and then I had to retrieve it from my archives. But uh. Like we were saying, uh, like my mom went to university right out of school to be a teacher, and she didn't pay that shit off until she was in her thirties. Man, like, hundred percent. It's yeah. Uh, my mom, uh, my mom also went to uh, the X there, and uh, it was yeah. She was probably like, I want to say like twenty ish when she went, and like wasn't until like I remember she was paying that off when I was fairly young. Like, so it. 
I, I, I'm big on I'm big on trade school. I mean, you can make just as much money as most of these guys going to university. You know, start a business, whatever. You know, get good in your trade, start a business, and the sky's the limit for you, right? Yeah, cause I'm big on just just follow your dreams. I don't I don't care if you want to be an astronaut, pursue that shit. Yeah, like, I, don't, I don't I don't look down on what anybody's doing. Just follow, do what you love because if you have a job that you hate, I mean, I worked at McDonald's for six years when I was in high school and yeah. going through college. Like, I hated that shit, but it made me work a lot harder to get to where I am today. So, just just do what you love and you'll be fine. At yeah, the end of the I, day. that's that's kind of why we all drive ATVs because we love it and uh, it's what we do. It's awesome, what we do, man. <laughs> <You're right? laughs> It's from a from a long day of work. It's a release, man. It's a release. So, what kind of crazy questions you got for me? Hit me with some. I got. I've, I tried to. I tried to memorize all the questions, and I'll tell you right now, there's something wrong with my brain, and I didn't do it. Oh, that's the thing. Usually, my my wife writes down all my questions on a piece of paper, but she got home really late, and I worked really late. So as soon as I got home from work, I had to run out to the shop to get here in time. Yeah. So all my questions are on my notes, which I cannot access without me cutting it. Ah, mint. So we are winging it. <laughs> all right. Wing it up. Blaze, what are your plans for your bike? I, I know you've told me some of your plans, but you haven't really gone into detail what you were going to do with that baby. Yeah. So I haven't really, I haven't really divulged it even on my Instagram page. If you, if, if you want to keep it a surprise. No, 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 no. No, or, or behind the bars podcast exclusive. You're hearing I'm, it right here first, gonna, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna release it to you because oh you're hell my, yeah, you're my brother and I love you. So I love you too, buddy. Right yeah. off the hop, my bike needs some work. So if you're asking me what I'm gonna do to my bike, whatever I do, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna be we're talking like a year, year and a half maybe. Um, <laughs> and I already know James is probably in here watching. Megan's probably in here watching. I got two or three other buddies in here watching, and they're all going to be like, what is wrong with you? You're an idiot. But I'm, I'm looking at a, a 1180 big board kit. <clears throat> 1180 big board with, uh, with upgraded cams. Now, I, now I'm going to – let me start off actually by saying this. I'm relatively new to the ATV and shit, bro. Like, honestly, I've – been biking for three years i started off on an old beat up honda 420 and it got me through everything but that's where i started um so like your bike you're super technical you know what's going into your bike you know how much your nitrous is doing and your tune and your all that stuff i don't know yeah but i'm gonna cut you off for one second you gotta, you gotta remember i'm i'm not even three years into this like i had a bike when i was 13 for a year and then I didn't jump back on an ATV until I was 23 years old. So I'm new. I'm probably newer than you, but it, it's just I, whenever someone is working on my bike, I just like to be next to them, even if I'm paying them. 100%. Just, just so I can kind of learn and like, I don't know, you know what the internet, internet's like. If you don't know something, then people jump right on top of you and yeah. they, they crucify you for being new. Yeah. And they just make fun. Oh, you don't know what this is. I just like to have a good base. Yeah. If you throw an engine in front of me, I'll say, yup, that's the engine, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I hire professionals to do that shit. But yeah. it's still nice to know a little bit about, like, clutching and certain yeah. things like that. But yeah. at the end of the day, I'm I'm, I'm brand new. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like you, right? So. Yeah. And, and you but, know, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, everything that I've done with my bike up until now. Which is, it's, it's a stock 1000. It's, I don't even have the tune done yet. But everything I have done has been with James, with Oracle ATV on Instagram. Yeah. Everything I've done with him, I'm over his shoulder. Like, what's, yeah. what's that? How are you, why is that going? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to learn it as much as I can. And, and that way I can kind of be better with the lingo a little bit and all that. But uh, so I guess back to, Back to what I'm going to do with the bike. 11, 1180 big board. Uh, 1180 big board is the ultimate goal. Um, I saw these things on uh, on Mr. RPM. They're called upgraded torque cams for a 1000R. And I don't know if they give more power or what they do, but 
I mean, any upgraded cam in a big bore engine, I think is, is you have to do that. Like you can't just stock everything and then just throw a big bore clutch in. So something that size, you just can't, you know, oh, it's got a big bore clutch. What is it? 1180 with nothing else. And I'm going to probably blow something the fuck up, you know? <laughs> um, and I, and I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm married and got a kid too. And as much as my balls are in her purse, I don't want to, I don't want to blow them up underneath my seat. You know what I'm saying? No, that's why I haven't used nitrous yet because at the end of the day, I was able to afford the motor, but if it blew, it would take a long time 100%. to get my bike back. 100%. That's why so when that's... I, that's why when I build mine, um, the, the why I'm saying all this to you is because I'm starting from the ground up. Yeah. A lot like you did with your bike, but if I'm going to put an 1180 big board, like mine's a, mine's a 1000 R XTP. So it doesn't have the XMR diffs. It doesn't have, um, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to probably need uh, a board out uh, uh, thro throttle and, and all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, I'm, if I want to do the 1180, which is it's what I want to do, I've already got my eyes set on it. I've already priced everything that I can think of. And then every idea I have that i don't know much more on i bounce off james and he's he's been working with me like buddy like that right so it's um it, it's gonna be a long it's gonna be a long process but uh, just just put a turbo in it already for no <laughs> and he won't <laughs> fuck he won't let me i'm telling you james if you're yeah, in you're here right now james go to james, lee he'll put a fucking turbo in it for you he won't ask any questions he'll yeah but hold on turbo in it and say here you go blaze have fun if lee <laughs> does it james won't fix it when i <laughs> it up. So i'm inevitably gonna blow it up if i do it i already know i am <clears throat> you know but uh but no every, everything i you know my bike comes from the house of james you know and and i i believe wholeheartedly in that man uh that's my brother and uh and I, I i think when we're done i think this thing's gonna be insane um so actually you have the stm and the qsc yeah yeah so for clutches i would go stm qsc uh qsc primary stm secondary um upgraded torque cams 1180 big bore gotta get the tune done uh it'll have a rad relocate but an xmr on an xtp which i think is gonna look really cool um and then assassinators definitely assassinators on it uh probably gonna have to upgrade axles and uh and when i with with the uh da, 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 da. with the rear diff we had an idea we had an idea uh we were thinking about putting a maverick rear diff in it yeah you can get off that off mud and wheels i think and 100 but, but now you also have to like extend the bracket that holds it in place, right? Do you know what I mean? So there'll be that. So I, like I said, I think it's going to be. A, I think it's going to be a long build, but but when it's done, I think it's going to be just a thing of beauty. But I am happy that you're going more in the performance department before you go too much in the looks, because I did all looks first. Yeah. And my bike was gutless, and then after I finally got the motor in it, I was like. I could have been having this fun, this much fun all along. Like, yeah. I just wasted it on my bike looking better. It's like, yeah. I mean, it, it worked, I guess. I mean, I think it looks good, but uh, I wish I would have went more the performance route like you're yeah. going to do. It's, it's just, it would have been a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and if you, you've seen my bike, I don't know if you really, really looked at it. Like, my bike's in pretty good shape, but if you really look at it, Cody, it's, it's beat up she's she's well, that, that's the thing about my bike i mean that's why maybe you should get a wrap because my bike i took the the old wrap off it and i was like this bike was only like a year old before i put that wrap on and it is beat to shit yeah like yeah. don't get up close to it I, guys at lingham just watch it go through the skag don't yeah. come up and look at five the fucking feet. thing five <laughs> i will push my you bike. away just yeah. stay back look at it from a distance you didn't see that there yeah. <laughs> just don't get close to it <laughs> no I, I haven't done very many uh <coughs> very many cosmetic things to it a couple of, you know uh megan got me a set of stickers done up um i i think i put i put halos on it i put rock lights on so i <laughs> so i'm pulling out my my red there a couple weeks back to clean it out and checking my fan found out the fan was fucked um 
And of course, I, I took the inside plastics off of where the, where the radiator and all that is. Well, I have rock lights. And didn't I forget that I had my rock lights unhooked. And then we went out to the skag down in Terrence Bay. And I'm, you know, bombing through the skag. And I'm having a good time. And I'm in the water cleaning the bike off, doing some water wheelies. And I'm like, why the fuck is this thing blinking like the cops are here, right? Like, <laughs> well, of course, I. it's just my tires i have outlaw twos on just ripping the fucking the the cords and everything out there's cords hanging out of the bike the bike looks like it came from crack house i swear to god (laughs) like it's bad it's fucking bad and james's comment down there everyone look at the the right lower (laughs) (laughs) AR. you were there that day but when i sheared that axle off the spline in my diff I don't know what we were thinking. We could have used a T-shirt or a rag to put over the air, but no. James just grabs a rock. My brand new S3 Power Sports front A arms, just powder coated. Bang, bang, <laughs> bang! He just fucking. He didn't hurt them, but they look ratchet as shit. But it worked. <laughs> used... it, it got me home. Yeah, it got but, you home. I mean. We could have easily put a rag or even a fucking leaf over it to stop it from beating the hell out of it. Yeah. So I had to use Manta Green Walmart spray paint and like paint over <laughs> it so you don't see the fucking big rust spot. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, God love that, man. What would we do without him? <laughs> I'm going to buy him a rubber mallet for Christmas and it doesn't leave his bike. <laughs> yeah. I can't keep painting my shit all the time when you keep smashing it up. In my new wrap, it doesn't color match all of the, the XMR stuff that my bike, like the original color, or any of the aftermarket stuff I bought. So now this winter, I have to fucking take everything off my bike and go get it powder coated to match the wrap because it looks a little silly to me right now. Like it's not this color anymore. It's more of a a John Deere green color, and it just bothers me. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, I noticed it looked a little darker. (laughs) But, I mean, I'm happy with the wrap, so I'll I'll, I'll be able to deal with it. I'm not not Diesel Dilly. I won't sit there and just fucking shake. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't look right, but. uh... OCD over it all day long. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, 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 I thought about wraps, but. I don't know, man. I like that. I'm I'm kind of old school, right? Like I'm 34. I'm I'm a little old school, and I kind of like that. That, like, I got my setup black and red, and uh, I kind of which like... I love. I love that, by the way. Like, whenever I was gonna like when I was a teenager and wanted a souped up car, you know, go hang out in the Walmart parking yeah. lot with the cool kids. Yeah. My, my color scheme in any like under like Need for Speed Underground is always blacked out car red rims like just your color match like this color scheme you have black and red yeah it's, it's just it's beautiful <laughs> like, it's it's clean it's a, it's a clean yeah. and and i i honestly think like a set of a set of uh, actual like black metal floorboards because my floorboards are cracked up and stuff like that but a nice set of black metal floorboards get a new set of rock lights put on it clean the bike up sc won it for once in my life um and you know that that bike's gonna look sick man like when I when I get the the rad relocate from my buddy, I'm getting the bars uh, powder coated black. Like I want to black that whole thing. It's gonna come red. Like I can put it on, and it would be a red bumper and all the XMR, all that. But I I honestly think when it's done and it's all blacked out, I think it's gonna be it's just gonna be even more insane. It's gonna make the rock lights look better. It's gonna make the halos look better. Um, that black and red man, you can't you can't you can't sleep on that. And since it's like it's a pretty well used color in like the car industry, or it's not like a special specialized stupid color like man or green, you can actually you don't even got to powder coat certain shit, right? Like you can just you can go to an auto parts store and you can get a red spray paint or something, and then you can get that same color in like uh what they use for engines or yeah something that actually makes it really tough so that it's going to be really tough so you can't like chip it and it'll fade and yeah i don't know if you don't want to go the powder coat route because that does get really expensive yeah it'd be you wouldn't even know like 
my whole front bumper is manta green fucking spray paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and it you doesn't, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. And but, it's not like it's chipping, you know? No, it's, it, it's good. Like, as yeah. long as I don't hit a fucking tree or, but, or anything, I don't plan on hitting a tree anytime soon, but shit happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially the way you drive and the way I drive. <laughs> oh, you missed my, my fall there. My first ever crash when I, I hit a, I went, well, first off, I went it out on the trip with a tie rod that went, Woo! yeah. So it was pulling me all day like this. And I just, oh, I don't know. I, there was a rock there. I hit it and I just fucking zip. <laughs> and then Dilly did the Dilly drop. That's went pretty fucking viral on Instagram. He does yeah. a full headstand in the skag. His head is completely under the sky. But he went so like, when I saw that video, I was like, it was like he just went like stiff as a board and just boop and flipped over his, his handlebar. Like it was insane. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that was captured. <laughs> well, have you ever seen my my video on uh, on Hero Eight yeah. YouTube? Yeah, your your wheelie that turned into it, a face plant real quick. His situation, at least it happened in Skag, and at least it happened on soft, you know, muddy surfaces. But that there, I, I went over the handlebars, and I flew over the handlebars, and I landed on my whole neck and back and everything, and the bike's running over me, you know, that, and that's how fast that shit can happen, man. You, you got to be, you can have fun, you can, you can run her hard, you know, full throttle all day, but, you know, you got to watch yourself a little bit, right? Well, me and the wife are talking about this. For anybody that's been in crashes, do you find for some, like, you go in slow motion while it's happening. Like I was able to realize I was fucked and then kick myself away from the bike. So it wouldn't roll over top of me. Like, did that happen to you? Like, so kind of happened in slow motion and you like, I don't know. It's just weird. I, I've talked to some people and they say that, yeah, it, it kind of slow mo it goes, slows down. Like life slows down and you're able to kind of experience it or save yourself a little more. If that makes sense. So, that that one I just told you about, no, that happened. That was so fast. The next thing I knew, I was on my back. I've got another story for you that you I don't think you've ever heard this one. Me and Erica, I had the Honda. I had my Honda 420. It was a kick shift. Uh, it had, I think, four or five speed, something like that. Anyway, we're down in Prospect. This is like six months into me owning this bike. I don't drive four-wheelers, never have. You know, I bought a satchel bag like it's like a back seat but it's a satchel bag so my wife erica i put her on the back and me her james Megan, uh my buddy my buddy sam and i think colton was there i'm not sure but anyways uh and devin was there so we go to the other end of joshua slocum you do you know joshua slocum at all no, okay. no, I, I'm, I'm just, I just know the valley. I just, whenever I go to the city and ride with you guys, I just follow the leader. I don't have no fucking clue where I'm going. Thank yeah. God for GPS. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Joshua Slocum's kind of like it's a, it's a wicked trail, man, because it's like not only like the Mersey where it's like flat in spots, but there's also like some challenging technical spots, and then there's like just trails going off into the woods. It's an awesome spot, but when you get to the very end, there's there's this long run to the garbage dump, okay? And just before the garbage dump, before that run, there's this big, like, it looks like a gravel pit, an old gravel pit or something like that from, like, way back in the day. And I'm talking, like, hills, no word of a lie, that are, like, as steep as that. They're, like, almost 90-degree angles. Back to what you asked me there about does it go slow-mo. I have Erica on the back. I'm looking at this hill. I put the bike into four wheel drive and I'm like, I can make that, you know, I can, <laughs> I can fucking make that. I, there's not, oh, come on. It's, I can see the tracks. I can see the way to go up. I can make that. I get about a quarter of the way up cause it goes up a little bit of a hill and then it gets steep. I get up to the top of that little bit of hill and my wife's doing this to me, tapping me on the shoulder. I'm, I'm getting the fuck off. No, you're, I'm not going up there with you. Yeah. Cool. So I, I stop, park the bike, she gets off. I said, All right, watch this. I bet y'all get up. So I put it in second gear. Again, I'm like six months into biking. I don't know. <coughs> Maybe I should have been in third or fourth, a higher gear so that it's not 
so much power to the back tires because that was a two-wheel drive. I had it in four, but half the time four wouldn't work. So anyways, long story short, I pin it. And I mean, I fucking pin it. And it goes up so far. And the next thing I remember was the bike tipping. So the bike tips back on me. And in that one second where the bike came back and I came off it, it was like I was in the matrix. It was crazy. Mm. I know I, I know I'm falling. In my head, I'm like, fuck, this is this is not good because I'm halfway up the hill. That's like this. So ultimately I know the bike's gonna come back at me. So the, I fall back off the bike. The bike stands up for a half a second. I hit the ground. The bike is literally within inches of me coming down. So about to come down on my back. A whole my four twenty was probably I don't know, what's my can am? My can am's like eight hundred pounds maybe or something like that, or five yeah. Hundred pounds or something, you know. The Honda was probably four hundred pounds at least. Um, so I land. The bike is coming at me, and I. It had to have been going slow mo because I had enough time to get my hands and my feet underneath me and dive again. The bike lands, and now it's coming at me again. It rolled at me three times before I dove sideways out of the way, and now my bike is tumbling down this hill, like down this mini mountain. My but my buddy Sam's over on the other hill. Like everybody's over with him, looking at him, and he's over, like pointing, like Blaze is about to fucking die over there. Like, yeah. oh, fuck, right? Everybody looks over, and it's just my bike's just going, man. It was, uh, it was bad, yeah. But time. Holy fuck! Wait one second. First time ever trying this. It's like drinking a pack of fucking peaches. So uh, I, I guess. I guess, uh, you know, product placement doesn't really matter here, I guess. Eh? No, it doesn't. Uh, my chart doesn't really give a shit about me. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully Ciroc doesn't either. Summer Citrus, bud. Amazing. But I'm, I'm just saying the best drink I ever had, I, they came out with it this year, I believe, is Mike's Hard Iced Tea. Okay. Now, you can say, oh, Cody, you take your panties off, bud. You're, you're a girl for drinking that? Listen, I... I I enjoy my, my my teas and stuff. Twisted teas is disgusting because it's so sugary, but the new Mike's Hard Ice Tea is just, it, it it doesn't have that sweetness. It actually tastes like you're drinking iced tea, and then next thing you know, you're 12 deep, and you're just yeah having a good time. So. You're, you're doing the Hucklebuck and, you know, uh, passing out your own juices. But that's the thing I, I never got into was the whole hill climbing thing. Like, I've always been scared shitless of it. Like, I won't even attempt. Yeah. I don't care what I'm driving. I will not attempt because I've seen – I've just seen too many videos on the internet of people doing that and trying. And then their bike just helplessly tumbling down the fucking yeah. hill. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, since then, Cody, I, <clears throat> I'll get into some shit. I'll, I'll – I'll have some fun and I'm pretty fearless, but since that day, man, I, I don't fuck with Hills. I don't fuck with anything that can throw me off that bike. I mean, a lot of the times Erica is with me as well. And I mean, I, that, that's the last that I'll hurt myself all day long, but it's when I hurt my wife or if I was to run into one of you guys or my bike comes flying at one of you guys, I'd never be able to live with myself. You know, because yeah. I'm the one that did that because I was the one that was acting a fool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But since that day, no, I, I stay away from I stay away from anything that's too too insane. But the funny thing is, the only other times I've actually put my bike on its side or on its ass, my wife was on the back with me. Yeah. Because the back seat, you have that much more weight in the back, and we'd just be going through the trail. One time we were just going through the trail, and we it was like a tiny little slope on yeah. the trail. And it was a rock, and I went up and caught the rock, and then it just the bike sat up sideways. Yeah. And then the other time we were leaving mom and dad after playing cards with them all night. That this is back when they used to live thirty minutes away from me. So we took the wheeler there. It was winter time. We went and just climb over a snowbank that the plow pushed in their cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. Got up, <laughs> down like that. Yeah. And when a lot of people haven't seen my or they've seen my bike, but it's not your average, like, six stocks, six fifty. Like, me, it took – me and Dad were almost shitting ourselves trying to roll the fucking thing to get it off its side onto its tires. Like, that's how heavy my fucking bike is. It's – that's why I don't 
go riding by myself because God forbid that bike ever land on me. Well, you're not going anywhere. I, I'm, I'm done, right? Like, I, I never go riding by myself. I'll ride around the driveway or up the road, but if it if it's like mudding or going into trails, no. Yeah. No, I, I just, I know that something could happen. It likely won't, but yeah. there's always that possibility. And me and you both have kids at home, so it's not really worth the risk. Yeah, no, and, and you know, something, it, that, that type of shit, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong fast, man. It goes wrong really fast. You know, I, I tell anybody that is going to think of buying an ATV, or or is given one or anything like that like atv safety is number one man because you you got a family to go home to you got a job to go back to you know it's it's all well and good until one wrong mistake fucks your whole life up you know what i mean yeah and and it can happen fast so it's you just gotta be safe you gotta you know don't put yourself in a stupid situation but uh you know it's easy to say that but then you come ride with us and we're wheeling fucking two kilometers and, you know, over ruts and, you know, hitting snow banks that are five feet high just to see how much snow puffs away. You know what I mean? Like there's something wrong with us. <laughs> I mean, I mean, diesel Dilly always makes me nervous when I watch him drive. He knows what he's yeah. doing. He's, he's had a bike since he was a kid, but just watching that guy constantly just balls to the wall. Like you'll see him like, going side to side and his tires will leave the road go into the ditch and he'll just pop back out like nothing happened and just yeah. keep fucking it's just like and you're behind him watching like yeah anybody else see that shit like, yeah yeah <laughs> you know dear you i totally agree with you another person like that is james man james has been on that bike or any bike since he was like come out of the when he came out of the womb on a bike but yeah i've seen him on a we were out one night in Prospect, raining. It was in the it was in the winter time. It's sleet. You don't know if it dropped in temperature. Nothing, and he's out on the pavement. And the pavement looks like a skating rink, and he's just fucking wheeling in twelve o'clock for like a kilometer, and he's going like seventy kilometers an hour. And I'm like, man, like if that goes bad, you're done, right? Like, yeah, it, them guys are scary, man. They they know what they're doing. I'll give it to them. They know what they're doing, but they're scary. Yeah, the only time I ever send my bike is if there's a mud hole in front of me <laughs> yeah yeah the whole like going to fast through the trails and shit like no i'd rather just put along and i'll have fun when we get to the mud like yeah. uh, the, the whole the whole fast thing doesn't really uh intrigue me too much i mean i traded in my brand new r1 for my fucking tan am because i knew i was going to kill myself because yeah just the the adrenaline is just like every gear you can wheelie if you want to if you pop the clutch it's like no it's i bought a bike to be a little bit safer so uh <laughs> yeah and you're you're right though you're not going fast when you're in the mud you're no you're, you're going you zero can, to maybe 50 i mean some yeah. holes you can hit a little harder right but uh using your torque to get in and out of the mud you're not using it well i guess we, i keep saying all this but like we're skimming across fucking mud <laughs> oh yeah we, yeah we hit it pretty fast but we're not going 80 or 100 by any means no, I and mean, no. the fastest we're hitting it is 60 me yeah 60 i'd say we've hit some holes at 60 especially yeah. the ones that we've seen people get stuck in we're like well i'm not gonna make it through unless i fucking zoop and skip it right yeah 100%. I mean, that, that was a that was the whole point of the nitrous was to hopefully if there's a hole too deep or there's a hole way too thick to kind of skim it and i feel like that's why i make it through a lot of holes when my 650 really shouldn't have is i mean you can watch all the videos like i i back way up i build my speed and the tires are just fucking as soon as i hit the mud so i kind of skip the deep part and then yeah. i land hard on my skid plate and then i bounce and then i can keep on going right yeah, I'm not. I'm not one to crawl in and then test the waters. Like it's just, it's either if, full in or going home, right? If if at, if at first you don't succeed, just hit her with some fucking speed. Hundred percent. <laughs> but we do need to. Uh, we got to get the gang going soon because it's been uh, it's been too long since our last ride. Yeah. Uh, I either need a fan 
or I got to get on my buddy. I'm still waiting to get this, this rad relocate. Um, I, I could probably get a fan, a couple hundred bucks, just get a fan. But yeah, we do. Cause I, and I mean like the whole crew, we need to get everybody. We need to get. Yeah. I mean, that's the really hard part, but I hope it kind of, I don't think any of our friends have kids in hockey. So I feel like wintertime runs would be the best. I know Lariah is currently pregnant, so that takes out her and Ty until that baby pops. And I guarantee she'll pop the baby out, and she'll love it, and then she will say, where's my Outlander? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Well, I know I know it's killing her and Ty to uh, be away from, from us and uh, her bike. Yeah. But, she- uh, uh, just, yeah, maybe a wintertime – Wintertime run sometime in November before shit starts freezing down this way. I know that sometimes we don't even have snow on Christmas. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got some wiggle room. And I, if I was you, I wouldn't do the rad relocate until you get a new rad. So, actually, so this guy, my buddy, he's the rad relocate that he's got me is like brand spanking new. His back end of the bike got destroyed, it got hit by a car. And now I'm like, he's still got. The front end of it is in like immaculate shape. A couple scratches to the bumper, but that's it. It's it had like it didn't have very many hours on it, is what I'm saying. So it's, yeah. for 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 the money I'm spending on it, it's it's brand new, bro. It's the fan works the whole nine yards. So I mean, in all honesty, you, you say November and all that stuff, but if that rad relocate comes Monday, it's going in by the weekend, and I want to go biking. Like let's. I've been missing it, man. I've been doing nothing but pounding it at work. Uh, you know, I, I the one thing I do like is I've been able to spend some time with my daughter and all that. But, you know, I, I'm i missing it, man. I got that itch. But, yeah, that's the thing. Like, you need – I don't know about you, but it's an, it's an escape, man. Like, it's – hundred percent. It's amazing for your mental health. Like, after I destroyed my bike, uh, the Shubenacity run last year in August, I didn't fix my bike, and I went six or seven months without riding it. Like, you guys know, I didn't post on here or anything. And I was in a state of depression. Like, I get home from work, and I would not leave that couch. I was no fun to be around. You can ask my wife. Like, I was just in a state of depression because that – what we do is – it's my escape, man. Like, it's – you work all week. You have a kid. I mean, you know, it's like you get a bath, and you get to feed them. You got to spend time with them. And you, you don't have any, any yeah. you time. Yeah. And so when I when I didn't have my bike for that long, it kind of my mental health went to it went to shit. Yeah. So I'm never allowing that to happen again, because this summer I really realized, like, I didn't even see any friends for seven months. That's how much of a slump I was in. Like, I would I'd come home, sit on the couch. I watched all the SWAT episodes and seasons like I didn't leave the couch. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I, I didn't see any of my friends. I just I was in a state of depression and. No, I, I'm never going to let that happen again because this – just hanging out with you guys, like, seeing you guys – if I even only see you, like, maybe once a month or once every couple months, like, that makes my month. Yeah. Yeah, you know what it's like. like we're all a family, and it's – I mean, you could have the worst fucking day and then hang out with you guys, and it's – you're on top of the world. Yeah, you you forgot all about it, right? Yeah, it's like nothing else matters, but you behind the bars – just living your absolute best fucking life. Yeah. Honestly, my, my favorite part about biking is, like, I love <coughs> I love jamming in the mud. I'm building my bike to be able to do that better and all that. But my absolute favorite part about biking is when all of us are on, and I don't mean a dusty trail where everybody's getting coated in fucking, you know, sand or salt or whatever in everybody's bikes over here. I just mean the initial fact of, we got 12 of us in a line and I know the guy in front of me has my back just as much as the guy behind me. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I can, Nobody gets left behind. When I, I, I can do this one and I know he sees me and knows I got you. And I look up ahead and I see a head turn back at me and it's, yeah. it's that camaraderie. And, and the other part I really like about riding is just getting through the trail off the trail, stopping, shooting the shit. Oh, shooting the shit is the best part, man. Bikes, you know. Like, I was just gonna whole... say, like one of my one of my favorite parts is literally when we meet up at our meetup spot. Our bikes are still on the trailer. 
We yeah. all have our coffee. We're sitting around smoking. And we're just, we haven't seen each other in shit so long. We're just, we shoot the shit for like an hour, two hours. And we don't even think about the bikes. We're just, yeah. we're in our prime just with our family, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's like nothing else I've ever experienced in all my years of playing sports or work or anything. Like this is uh, completely different than anything else. Yeah, no, this, this is the, the, even the community of, of ATV and like everybody from across Canada, the States, um, my, my Instagram accounts, like I started in February, like of this year, like I, I think I'm close to 900 or I'm just about at 900, you know, I, Jesus, ran a bug. um, I, 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 there's probably a lot of them that are bots and stuff, but so far, everybody that's followed my account and people I engage with and people that engage with me, like everybody's on the same page. You know what I mean? Like everybody's like, like they're not just hitting you with a like and you never see them again. Like you could message somebody like I met, I messaged, uh, sorry, I don't think I did. I had, I had a scammer try and message me on, on Instagram message. Oh, you sent that, uh, that, uh, all the, yeah, I was like, I, I dress up as a banana. Off of it. Yeah, I dress up as a banana and I freak out the chimps at the zoo or some shit, right? Like, yeah, one of those things where I, I, I am girl like sex or whatever, right? So I posted what I had wrote to this chick and and Grim Knight actually. Um, shout met. out Grim Knight, man! Like, shout out Grim Knight. He I'm messaged doing me in person interview with him during Skagtober. Like we've been. We've been voice chatting back and forth, and his car is actually down right now. Yeah. And he's like, I don't know if I'm going to make it to Skagtober, man. And I was like, where, where do you live? He's like, just outside Peterborough. And I'm like, me and Diesel Daily are staying in Peterborough Thursday night. I will come and get you. Yeah. Drive to your house. I have a flat deck. We can fit one more bike. I will fucking drive your ass to Skagtober. I said, yeah. you're not missing Skagtober over your car being down. You don't yeah. have to spend the money to get it fixed right away. I yeah. will pick your ass up and I will deliver you back to your house at the end of it. Like, yeah. come on. He, he, he's, so some, he's such cool shit, man. But that right there is the ATV community in a nutshell, you know? Like, guys would probably go the extra distance for each other because, you know, like, like our, our, our sport is so – you know, you got the loud bikes. They all got RJWCs or fucking Empires or whatever. And they got the lights, the rock lights, and they're 1,000s going, yeah, down the fucking road and all that. And, I mean, we're we're probably not looked on in the best light, I guess. As well. No, and that's the thing, man. We, we're looked down on so fucking much by people who don't have ATVs. It's it's ridiculous. We're just, we're just judged for our loud bikes. Like, yeah. You guys just make noise. You're going up the road doing wheelies and that. At least we're not out fucking stealing your gas out of your car, or your Cadillac converter. Like this yeah. is our fun. Like fuck off. <laughs> but but and I think that has a lot to do with why the ATV community is so tight. Like I said, with with Grim there, he 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 doesn't know me from Adam. He could have thought, you know, who's this guy created a random account? You know, Red Devil XTP. He's got three hundred followers. Maybe he's a bot. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's messaging, going, buddy, that was hilariously like. That was keep that shit up, and I'm like, that was pretty funny, right? And we had a conversation for a few minutes, and that was that, right? Um, and it's just you know, we're like I said, man, all our guys we stick together, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of bike you got, doesn't matter as long as you're a good person, as long as you give a shit about about the sport and about hanging out with people, you know what I mean? That's 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 the main thing. I mean, I've never done a road trip in my fucking life, but as soon as I, I, I I don't, I don't even know how it all, how the Skagtober thing happened. I think I just reached out to, I think it was uh, Brandon, BBS Off-Road, and just said I was thinking about coming up. And, man, like, Pam and Colin and Fleeter and Snowman, they all just, like, they basically planned everything for me. Like, they were like, we'll take care. You just worry about getting here, man. We'll take care. They've never met me. Yeah. I've talked to them for five fucking minutes, and – um, it's like I'm already I'm already family. Like I would never drive this far for anything else. Yeah. It's like I'm it's like I've, I've known them my whole life. Like I'm so excited to go down and hang out with these guys. Yeah. And I I've, I've never seen I've never seen them face to face. I've never had long like face to face conversations with them, but it's like they're already my brothers. It's it, it's uh, it's fucking weird, man. It, it's yeah. weird. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately we come you and I we come from Nova Scotia. And I don't know if yeah. you feel 
I don't know if you feel the same way, but I'm from Halifax. I was born and raised in Halifax, Herring Cove, Spryfield, all that shit. And unfortunately, like around here, I don't really trust people that much. Do you know what I mean? Like, even in the ATV community, it's like, yeah, he could be cool and all that. But then, like, if I was to say I didn't take 902 Green Monster with me and I just went out as Red Devil XCP with some random guy I've never met before in Halifax, well, he might just fucking dip. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not everybody. Dip or might fucking raw be a gun. Uh, you just don't know, man. Like, not everybody is your buddy. You know what I mean? And well, there's and, always going to be bad apples in every community, but 100%. I feel like we're we're really good at, at finding those bad apples. Like, you you get a vibe pretty fucking yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah, and that's 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 all I mean by that. I, I don't mean that I've ever been in that situation. I just, you know, I don't I don't always trust everybody all the way just because of where I'm from and the situations I've been in and all that. But you know, I I get more trusting guys in the ATV community now because it's like, man, dudes are reaching out. Just like you know, props to you, man. You're doing awesome. Like keep up the good work. And you know, I'm in the grand scheme of things i don't have a lot of followers but you know i i love this i love this industry i love this sport i love taking cool photos and i'm always trying to get a better photo or a better video or something like that i love posting it i love video editing all that shit and for for guys that i look up to because they're doing it they got the followers they're putting out amazing content and all that and for all yeah. this, like give you that little fist pop it's like cool man you're you're all right you know and that's just it's uh no, it really is absolutely crazy. But like, I mean, I'll, I'm I'm worried. Like, I was talking to uh, Ruse. I forget his name. Like, I gotta. I hate that. Like, that's why I'm doing this podcast. Is I don't like calling people by their fucking Instagram name. Like, this, that's why I started this podcast so their yeah. followers can get to know the person behind the bars. That's yeah, why yeah. The podcast is called. I had people message me like, "Why is it called Behind the Bars?" It's like. Because we're getting to know the person behind the ATV handlebars. And I'm like, why don't you just call it behind the handlebars? It's like, that doesn't fucking sound cool. Yeah. Yeah. Behind the bars. What are you guys all in jail? <laughs> <laughs> fucking convicts. Yeah. They're convicts. Hey, hey man, I'm, I'm tatted up, man. I'm going to show everybody my cock right now. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Look away. You don't want to see my cock. Damn. Nice cock. That's a massive <laughs> cock. That's a pretty cock, too. That's why I love you, Cody. You're nuts. <laughs> and I got a little cock. <laughs> huh. No, but one thing I am worried about in Ontario, I was talking to Ruse about it. It was like uh, the whole parking my bike in. Oh, AirPod fell out my shoe. That was lucky. It was an AirPod. Uh, it's uh, parking my bike on my trailer overnight when me and Dylan are inside the hotel sleeping. Mm-hmm. I'm, it's not going to be the ATV community that does it, but it's it's a scary situation. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Listen, like, you're you know you're in Ontario, man, and I don't. I've never been. Maybe I shouldn't even speak on it, but you know, I I wouldn't leave. I I I pick up my bike. So just so everybody knows, my bike does not stay where I live. I live in a two bedroom apartment, top floor, in an apartment building. I can't have my bike here. My bike stays in change place. Unfortunately. Even here in Halifax, I put my bike on the back of my truck with my tailgate up, ratcheted down. I take my bike in the or my my key in the fucking house, and I'm still sitting there at night going, "Is somebody gonna steal my fucking bike?" Man, I'm telling you, I like I understand completely because I picked up I picked up uh, Dilly's bike from Go Power Sports. Yeah, I drove. This is the day we met uh, back my backcountry Power Sports. So mm-hmm. I picked him up in Sac Vegas. He unloaded his truck. I mean, unloaded his bike, put it on his truck. He backed the truck up to a big light pole mm-hmm. so that nobody, there's no way anybody could get that off of his. Like, you think I would go downtown Halifax and park the fucking bike there and just go no. out and party? Not a chance, man. No. And I'm not even from Halifax, but I see enough. I hear enough from you guys, and I see enough on the news, and I mean – you can look at the news and see that Toronto is pretty uh, more fucked up than Halifax in some areas. So it's like I'm going somewhere I've never been before. I'm just entering a GP, uh, uh, entering it in my GPS, and I'm driving there. Like, I don't know what to expect, right? Yeah. 
so we were going to go with my friend. My friend has like a tiny aluminum trailer. So mm -hmm. we we're going to put Dylan's, we we're going to put Dylan's bike on the back of my truck. And then I was going to go on the trailer. But then I was thinking someone could easily walk up two people, pick up that trailer off my hitch yeah. and then transfer it over to theirs. And then there goes my bike. And people say, well, you have insurance for a reason. Well, my bike is only insured for 20000 and I'm sorry, but that's not worth it to me. No, it's, it's – it, not only is it a bike that you enjoy and you love, it's probably worth more than 20000 you know. Yeah, and even – in it, I couldn't even go get a bike for, for that price. Yeah. Like, the bikes down here are out the door with warranty for a 1000 Renegade is 28 fucking grand. Yeah, think about it. My used 1000 I paid cash for mine. And I got mine for 13 and a half. And that's used. It had like 25 or 2,800 kilometers on it or something like that. You know, they're, they're crazy prices down here. I mean, you know, you, you got to deal with that kind of stuff anywhere is that somebody, some idiot could come try and steal your bike, you know, but uh, I, I, I honestly think you'd be fine. You know, them guys down there, they know what they're talking about. You know, they're, you're probably not going to be up in a hotel on crack alley. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't even know where we're going yet. I haven't booked. I booked uh, the Lakeside Inn next to Colin's house for Friday night, Saturday night. But me and Dilly just kind of went out on a limb and said, you know what, let's just leave a day early. That way we're not driving all night Thursday and then arrive Friday. We won't want to party. We won't want to hang out with anybody. We'll be fucking sitting there with a beer in our hand, just yeah, you're sleeping, in, right? You're gonna need some rest for sure. So that's why we're going a day early, but we're gonna be in. I like I don't even know what Peterborough looks like for fuck's sakes. So yeah. I don't know if it's a big city. Is it a small town? Like what am I getting myself into here? And I'm gonna get controversial for a minute and say, uh, fuck the Canadian government because uh, I can't bring my nine mil with me. <laughs> and I'd feel a lot safer if I had my nine mil with me. Yeah, yeah. I mean someone can walk up to you at, and and rob you at knife point. Like I don't know what kind of place you're going into, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about the Lakeside Inn because, I mean, that's out in the fucking boonies. <laughs> so, now I'd be like me down I, here. But even even down here, man, we've been having – it's like every night I look on Facebook and someone's bike's been stolen out of their fucking driveway or out yeah. of their shop. And it's like the world's going to shit in a hurry. And one of our crew is going to be on the receiving end one day. I hope it's nobody on our crew, but – you can see it in the ATV community. Like, people are losing their bikes and shit. And, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate, but, you know, it's it's one of those things you almost just can't control. Now, I thought you guys were getting a, an enclosed trailer for your bikes. That's for uh, – that's uh, my sponsor, Backcountry Power Sports. Shout out, Backcountry Power Sports. That's for us next year. That's for our crew. That's right. That we're going we're gonna to plan to go up to Skagtober. Next year, it's going to be – probably won't be Skagtober. It might be the, their summertime Skag run. But, yeah, he's going to lend us his uh, enclosed trailer. It's a full shop with tools, TV. Really? So, Wicked. I mean, we're, we're already set for that, right? I How wish many I had uh, – I think he said it can hold four bikes. Oh, wicked. It, it's a, like, that's where he does all his work out of. He doesn't have a shop. He has a massive enclosed trailer that has a TV and all of his tools and you can just work on everything in there. Wicked. So there's four bikes taken care of right there. And then it's not that hard to get, I have a trailer. I mean, every, everybody we drive with has a fucking trailer, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, so you put four, you put four people in the truck. It, it's really cheap gas money and it's really yeah. cheap hotel stay and every, it, everything's cheaper. So the Can-Am gang, I like to call us that crew from the 902. Patent pending. Uh, we're going to be up in Ontario next year, the whole crew. I don't care. Mariah's going to find a babysitter for her kid. We're going to – you're going to find a babysitter for your kid. James is going to find a babysitter for his kid. I'm going to find a babysitter for my kid. And we're all fucking going up there. And we yeah. are meeting everybody and experiencing this as a family. Yeah, next yeah. Year. Yeah. It sounds good to me. Now something else we have to do. We have to go to Newfoundland. We have to do the Newfoundland run. Honest to fuck. So many people hit me up about that. I think like my, my close friends from down here, that's like, everybody wants to do Newfoundland, man. Like, a lot of people might not know about Newfoundland, but their trail, like, you can drive up the road there. 100%. So, me and, me and Erica were in 
we were in Corner Brook there a couple of weeks back. We went for two weeks. We went to go visit her dad and all her family and all that. Could let Kira get introduced to her aunts and uncles. So we go down to this bar. It's a bar is called the Hue and Draw. And I'm sitting there and it, I'm having a couple craft beers and stuff like that. And I look fucking over and here's buddies pulling up on the side by sides, four wheelers, the whole nine on the main drag. I'm like, oh no. Oh no, I fucked up. I should have took my bike. Because I could have left her dad's place and just drove me and Erica to the bar on the back of the Outlander. Rock lights going, halos going, wheelie down fucking Main Street. You know what I mean? And that's the thing you, you like Backcountry just said in the comments, you can literally, you don't even need to bring your fucking vehicle. You yeah. literally drive your bike on the ferry in Cape Breton and you drive it off the ferry in, Newfound in Newfoundland and you don't need... Yeah, our car because they let you drive on the road there. Yeah, hundred percent. You get off the boat, and now you're you're pretty well just straight to trail. Like it's you can't just drive down the highway with your four wheeler. It's like an actual rails and trails like we have here, um, and it goes all in through all the way down to Corner Brook. Like to Corner Brook driving my my truck was two and a half, two hours and twenty minutes, something like that. So you're talking like you know three four hours maybe <clears throat> biking to the nearest town, but it goes all through Newfoundland. So I, I just, I think it'd be wicked. I think it'd be a good time. I think it'd be a, it's, it's something that's close. You know, you, you take a week and go for a week and come back. It's not a long drive to get there. But even if we can't pull that, I did a, a Cape Breton trip last year. There's so many Airbnbs down there right on the water. We got one on the water and I'm telling you, man, it's just, it sounds like the same as Newfoundland. We were driving up the road, going to the grocery store on a, four wheelers and then you get on the trail right next to the airbnb and you could go all day you could bring three gas jugs and you could keep on going it, it was absolutely nuts yeah yeah <clears throat> and that's only six hours away from me it's five hours away from you i yeah. mean if that's not even a day trip we could leave in the morning get there by lunchtime then we'd have a full weekend you wouldn't even have to take time off work if you didn't want to right yeah so I mean, that is also an option for a big – we're going to Ontario, the whole gang. But oh, 100%. If we, wanted it, if we wanted to be spontaneous and be like, let's fucking get wild this weekend and do something crazy, we could be like, okay, it's all of our weekends off. I don't know how that works, but all of our schedules line up together. When we all get the same weekends off, we can just head down to Cape Breton, get an Airbnb. It would cost $50 a person by the time you have that many people and just fucking ride – yeah. Like, it's such beautiful country up there, man. Like, Yeah, I, th I think that we need oh. a lot more. Like, we do, like, we do our mud run over in uh, Kennecook, and we go out your way out in New Minas and all that, and we go to Prospect. I think we should, like, try and venture out farther, like New Brunswick or Moncton or wherever, right? Like, get, get see what Nova Scotia has to offer. Like, we can, we'll do, I'm, next year, bro, I got you, I'm, I'm coming to Skagtober, whatever you want to plan. By the way, we're planning our, we're doing that Newfoundland trip that me and her do every year, two weeks, every summer. That's, you know, go visit her family and all that. I'm taking my bike up next year and all that. Um, and we're going to probably do it like mid June. So I don't know how that works for Ontario's summer run. Maybe it would be better if we did Skagtober, if we all went, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So me and her are doing that in, say, like, June of next year. So that's just a heads up. That's a, I'm giving you a year's heads up. If you don't want to do that one, we can do Skagtober. Either way, two, three days, four days, five days, whatever it is, let's go. Let's do it next year. Um, I'll start putting it in the in the notebook now because I've been watching some of the videos from up there, and it just looks insane. I think you guys are going to have an amazing time. Yeah. The only, the only thing – only time I'm busy next year that I have planned – is me and Dilly are going down for Austin Cruiser's May long weekend run. Oh, yeah. So we have to take 10 days off work because it's a fucking four-day drive to get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only thing we have tying up our schedule. That's literally May long weekend. We have all summer and then three months in the winter because Nova Scotia, we don't really get that much snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that knock on fucking wood. <laughs> That'd be cool, too. That'd be really cool, too. But, but I, I think, you know, spread notes, see what Nova Scotia has to offer. Um, and even New Brunswick, man, like I, I grew up 
for the first 13 years of my life in Fredericton driving on the back of the bike with dad. And yeah. if, you, if you guys ever wanted to go an hour past Fredericton in New Zealand, uh, hillbilly country, I mean, I, I can, I can get you from trail to trail to trail and it's really nice. New Brunswick trails are awesome. You need a pass to be on them. We wouldn't cause we're just visiting, but yeah. they're all groomed. They're all beautiful. They have snowmobiles on one side, APDs on another side. Yeah. I mean, it's, Nova Scotia, I believe, is so far behind on the times when it comes to ATVing. I mean, we don't get new trails. All of our trails are getting shut down, left, right, and center. Yeah. And at vans, at vans, trying to come in and take over. It's just, yeah. yeah. Which, if they're going to do good for the community and they're going to maintain our trails and help get us better access points and stuff like that, I'm all for it. But yeah. right now, they're, not, oh, they're just trying to make rules and kick you off trails and – make you get uh, a permit to drive your fucking yeah. four-wheeler. It's if like, you don't no. pay for the pass, if you don't pay for the pass, you can't go on. Yeah. Now, like, I agree with you totally. If they're, if they're going to put some money into the trails and do all that kind of stuff, then power to them guys, you know, we, but they gotta, they gotta put something in front of us that shows that they're not just talking out of their ass. Yeah. 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 And like, I mean, I'll pay, you, I'll pay 50, a hundred dollars a year to drive on good trails. Yeah. Like, you also, you also got to give them a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. Cause I mean, they're just starting out, you know? So it's, a lot of it's probably cutting their teeth, learning what they can do, what they can't, you know, focus it on this when maybe they, you know, it's them guys, are, hopefully they're doing the right thing. And it does, it's not going to stop me from riding the trails is all I know, you know. Oh, I know. But at the same point, they go on groups and say, we're hosting a, a driving lesson so you can get your ATV license. You guys better come because DNR is going to get you if you don't. And just they really put, they're shoving it down your throat. It's like. There's 60 year olds and 70 year olds that have been driving fucking ATVs for 40 years. You really think they're going to go get a license? Yeah. Or even someone that's been driving 10 years, five years? No. Yeah. You can't just throw this at people last minute. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, one if, thing, I think wait, if you're going to, if you're going to just make guys pay for the pass, you know, pay for the pass. If it's that big of a deal, pay your 30 or 50 bucks to add fans. You get your pass for fucking a year or three years or something like that. I, I don't think that that, uh, I don't think that license thing's going to fly. Nobody's going to like, nobody's going to do it. Here's a hot topic that really pisses me off. So you're telling me that these little bicycles with these one inch tires are allowed driving on the highway are allowed in main street on back roads, driving up the center fucking lane. They can't go over 10 kilometers an hour. Usually they don't have a license. They don't have insurance. They don't have anything. Yeah. Our bikes can go over 100, and we need insurance and registration to legally drive them, but we're not allowed on the road. But you got these guys with their, their spandex on, and they're allowed doing whatever they want, slowing up traffic. It's like, dude, what are you guys fucking doing here, right? Like, yeah. how does that make sense? Move! <laughs> The light's green, God. Nothing pisses me off more than being on a back. I'm fine with being off on a track, but when I come up over a hill and I see Buddy and fucking lime green spandex just going 20 or 10 and he won't move out of the way, it's like, what are you, I don't, what are you doing? Go on the fucking sidewalk. My mother always told me when I was a kid, stay off the road with your bike. Drive on the fucking sidewalk. What do these guys do? Right up fucking Main Street. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just reading some of these comments right now. Hey, backcountry power sports. Red Devil XTP. Careful. Gonna have to. Gonna have to buy a bike for her too. Trust me. She wants a bike. By the way. Oh yeah. Okay. It's your it's your podcast, Cody, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna release more information. <laughs> I'm putting money away right now. I mean, I got some other shit on the go, but it, I'm starting to put some money away right now to get her a bike for, for like, next year. Your wife or your dog? My, no, my wife. Well, I mean, oh, if, okay. if he's saying to be careful because of my daughter, I already know that's coming because if I have it my way, she'll be doing wheelies when she's four. But my wife, yeah, she she wants her own bike, and I honestly don't think my bike's going to be any fit for, for Erica to be on. So uh, she's not around me right now. She's off in the other room. She can't hear me. So I'm telling you, she doesn't know. So that's between she's us. Gonna know because this podcast goes on my on my on my YouTube. On oh my yeah, YouTube, I forgot about what's that. going on Spotify. So it's not like 
we're nope. doing a live and it's just going to disappear, right? She's, hey, babe. It, it's, it's out there. Hey, yeah. I'm saving for a bike for you, babe. <laughs> oh, there she is. Yeah, she heard her name. Hey, the fucking bells were ringing. <laughs> lucky, lucky thing with me is the wife isn't really into it. She she kind of was with the back seat, but the back seat made my bike look really ugly. And having a kid, it, it's it's damn near impossible to find a babysitter for your kid. Like if you want to yeah. go out on a Saturday, usually 100%. your parents or grandparents are busy on a Saturday. They're not going to take your kid all day. And when you go out wheeling, we could be back in four hours. We could be back in twelve hours. We don't know. So you can't say, okay, we'll pick Jackson up at this time. It's like, yeah, see you when we see you, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm sure a lot of people, other people have it, have it a lot. <coughs> but, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have anybody like that in our life. You know, we, my dad, my dad takes her and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, he, he's kind of, but he's getting older and stuff like that. My mom passed away a couple of years ago from cancer and, and her parents live in Newfoundland. So it's, you know, we got my sister and my sister Rose, she's, she's a godsend. She, to, every time we need some time for us or we want to go biking or something like that, we give her a couple of days notice and she's, she's always there to help us out. But you know, like it's, it's a tough one. Like if you were to call me up tomorrow and please, let's go biking at 10 AM. I could say, yeah, sure. Why not? My job allows me to do that. I don't have to go to work tomorrow. You know what I mean? I don't have to go to work for the rest of the year if I don't want to. Unfortunately, if you said, I'm bringing my wife, bring your wife. I'm at the mercy of, you know, if, if my sister's working or not, because Eric is a stay at home. Yeah. We don't really have, we don't have many people to watch her. Right. So it, it gets tough, but, but you know, Erica is Erica also, like we were talking about earlier, how it's a release. I work so many hours, man. She's a stay at home mom. So it's, you know, I, I'm the I'm the primary breadwinner, and I'm cool with that. She's cool with that. And when I want to go biking, she doesn't give me any flack. She doesn't, you know, she's like, "Go, you you need to, you need to have that time for you, right?" Like, I got I got lucky with her because she's she thinks about everybody but herself first. You know what I mean? No, and I, my wife is the exact same way. Like, there's so many wives out there, girlfriends out there that are like, "You're not going wheeling today." Yeah, you're hanging out with me. It's like uh, yeah. my my wife explains it like this: I can either let you go out and have fun, and you'll come home in the best mood ever, mm -hmm. or I can make you stay home with me. You're gonna resent me, and then resent me more once you see all the pictures of your friends having fun, and then resent me because I didn't let you. I wanted you to suffer at home with me. Yeah, She's yeah. like no. What, what's the point in putting us both through? being bored when you could go out and have the best time of your life with your friends and and have that release that you need like that yeah. fun time that like a throttle therapy thank you that's yeah. exactly what it is 100 percent, 100 percent. but what you should do what i'm thinking about doing and matt is uh, i'm not going to say anything but uh <laughs> we should uh you, you should think about a side by side man because uh I was going to do the Renegade 1000, and then I was going to keep my bike as a strict, just a mud race bike, just yeah. didn't have a Renegade 1000 as my daily, but uh, my wife likes going out, you know, she mm -hmm. likes, and then if, if when Jackson gets old enough, it could be a family thing, and you could still hang out with your friends, right? You could still, you could all hop in the side by side, and you could still go out and play in the mud. Yeah. hang out with your friends but you'd have your family there with you to enjoy it so yeah. I, I really think it'll be it'll be a bit because jackson's only he's not even two years old yet he's only like a year and nine months but uh three four years like I, i'm thinking side by side is, is really the way to go you know something and that's even if even if you had even if you had your four-wheeler your your outlander and she had the side by side now she can drive her and the little one, you know what I mean? Now you can bring the whole family and you still get to yeah. go do what you like to do on your bike. Like I'm, I'm not a fan of side by sides. I never really have been. I've owned, I've owned like Acura Integra's back in the day with B18 racing clutches fast as fuck, you know, yeah. four wheels, super fast. I've owned cars and I just, I'm not a fan of the steering wheel, man. I'm a, I'm handlebars over steering wheels all day 
So I, I if if I were to try and get them, I get them side by side. But I wouldn't be the one driving it. They'd be that'd be that's like for you guys. You you bring Kira. You can pack lunch and you can fill the trunk of it up and the whole nine yards. But I've still got to I've got to have that. You know, I've got. You know, I'm I'm never getting rid of. It. I'll always have an AT. No. I'll never be a guy that just has a side by side. Yeah. I mean, sure, you're comfy and shit, but. I don't. I don't see the enjoyment if you're going out by yourself. You're sitting there, just yeah, yeah. It just doesn't seem fun to me. But you know, if that's a great idea for you. Then it's like you can't find a babysitter for the kid. Yeah, I mean, your kid, your kid needs a babysitter till they're at least like fucking thirteen or older. I don't know. Hundred percent. But like, then you could be like, no babysitter. Okay, we're all go out as a family. Dad can drive his Outlander. Mom and the kid go on the side by side, and you all yeah. still have a hell of a time. And then yeah. everybody's having the fun, not just you. And then yeah. the wife's stuck home with the screaming baby and the hundred percent cursing you under her breath. <laughs> plus, plus them things come with heaters and fucking everything. So you know, oh you, my uh, god, you can get the other weight suit up like an SUV if you want. Hundred percent. And and now you're you're out there freezing your ass off on the trail with all your buddies. The side by side pulls up with your wife in it. You jump in, turn the heater on, warm up, you know, have a beer, whatever. It's I, I think I think it's good to have them with you, but uh, I, you know, some she likes having she likes having that. Like we love our daughter. Don't get me wrong when I say this. Love my kid. I'd kill for my child. But Erica likes having that time away too. You know, like it's. Oh, there's got to be some give and take. You can't and be the only one getting out of the house, right? You no. Gotta, you got to take a bullet for the team, too, or else yeah. it's just really unfair. But that's why I think, like, I'm going to try and get her, a, like, a, an ET, like, a four-wheeler because she was on my Outlander. She likes it. She's it's she's, it finds it fun. And, I mean, I, I still got to work a lot, man. Like, I, you know, it, I don't know if your wife works or not, but mine doesn't. So it's I have to be – at work every day, it's what I do. I enjoy doing it. It's it's my family. It's what we do, right? But but the amount we go, I think, warrants a four wheeler over a side by side. Do you know what I mean? And plus, she when she gets that time on the four wheeler away from Kira, like she gets to get away. Not don't bring the kid with us. Leave the, leave her at home. You know she can hang out with her aunts and and let's just go yeah. get away for for a few hours and, and that's she likes that and I, I, that's why I'm like I'm gonna get her a four wheeler for sure. But before I forget, Blaze, uh, this is a question we talked about in private. Uh, what's your favorite part of being a dad, man? Oh, I, I forgot about that one. That's a good one. My favorite part about being a dad. I work. I work. I work a lot of hours, man, and uh, and I'm not always here. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not yeah. always home. Um, sometimes I got to work all day and then go back six to ten, which is like I work till six, work till five, and then I have an hour off, and I have to go back to work at six, and I work till ten o'clock at night. And by the time I get home from that, she's already going to bed, so I haven't seen her in two or three days. Um, the best part about being a dad was all that being said is when I say, fuck it, and five o'clock, I'm like, I'm going home. And I open that door and I'm not even, I swear to fuck, I'm not even at the door. And yeah. she's already like, <gasps> and then the fucking doorknob turns and I haven't even opened the door and I hear daddy, daddy. And she comes flying over, bro. And like latches onto me with the biggest hug and wants a kiss and it's just, you know, that that coming home to seeing that kind of shit makes it all worth it for me. And that's that's my favorite part about being a dad. It's just, you know, she missed you all day, you know. And and yeah, I I love her, man. She's she's amazing. It's really something you can't explain until you are a father. Wow. I think you'll never understand the feeling. I mean, I'm I'm just like you. Like I regret how much I worked when Jax was a kid and just stayed home with him. Like. Like you said, like I, I'm 70 hours a week. Like I'm, I, I bust my ass, and I'd go to work before the kid gets up. I'd get home and the kids asleep, and I, I miss so much when he was a baby. Like, it's like first steps or first words or just shit like that that we miss mm -hmm. as dads that kind of get taken for granted. And you look back and you're like, fuck, man, like. 
I wish I, I didn't have to work, but you're doing it for your family, right? So, but I don't, the only way to explain it is I love my wife to death. I, we've been together six years, and I shit you not, we have never got in an argument or a fight in six years. Yeah. Not a bicker, not – like, that's, that's pretty fucking impressive, man. Like, uh, like, I love her to death, but – if there was a bus heading towards us and I could choose her or Jackson, she's going in front of the fucking bus. Unfortunately, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it, I, I, I love her more than anything perfect. in the world, but I love that kid a little, a little bit more. <laughs> and that's, but that's where, that, that's where that part of you can't explain it comes in. Because, yeah. because listen, I, I love my wife, my brother Matt. I got a, I got a close friend of mine, Matt Fenton. He's my brother, man. I love that motherfucker. He is my go-to guy. You know, unfortunately, I love him so much, but I don't, you know, my kid, him, sorry, bro, you're going for the bus. You know what I mean? My wife, yeah. sorry, bro, you're going for the bus. I'll tell you right now, my grandmother, sorry, Nana, you're going, you're going for the bus. I'm sorry. I, it's the whole world. Guess what? That's a the whole bus. world. We're all going in front of the fucking thing to save my kid. One hundred percent, ten percent. It's just, it's a different. It's a different connection, you know. It, it really is. It's a different connection. Oh, it's it's a mini. It's a mini you. It's a mini your wife. Like it's it's both of you blended in into this beautiful little fucking human being that just that's so innocent and just melts your heart when they look at you and or you come home like you said and they look at you and smile and go that that yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it just makes you want to cry. <laughs> yeah. She's she's a hard one to deal with, but she's got her mother's looks. She's got my attitude, and uh, and she's cute as a button. She's you know she's the trifecta. It's oh, they, they, but like that picture that uh, Megan got our, our kids first time meeting each other, and they were yeah. running down the driveway holding hands, and yeah. she got that that moment, that special moment between them. That was pretty. Uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. And that shows you how innocent they are, right? Like, they're just, you know, your son's very good with people, kids, like, young children he doesn't know, and Kira's the same way, you know? And it's when you get two kids like that together, and you just see them off, you know, oh, here, hold my hand, and we'll run, and here's a flower. Not, or, a, not a care in the fucking not world. Not a care in the world, no. How no. a lot of us should be living our lives, but unfortunately it doesn't happen that way. Now, uh, you said you, you and your wife have been together, what, seven years? Uh, I believe it's six going on seven. Six. Married for a year and a half. Six going on seven, and you haven't really fought. Never, we've never gotten into a bicker, an argument, uh, flipped out at one another, just never in our lives have we. We're just both very, uh, I don't know, kind people, like Jack's. Yeah. If Jack sees a stuffed animal, he picks it up and kisses it. Like, he's not... Yeah. I don't you your kid is what he grows up around or what she yeah. grows up around whatever if if your kid sees you and your wife always screaming at each other guess what your kid's gonna be throwing 100%. tantrums and screaming and 100%. or you know so we don't all our kid sees is love so whenever Jack sees another kid his first instinct is to walk up hug and then <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, and I'm don't don't hate on me for this, all right? Because we've been together for a while. Don't hate on me for this. What am I I'm pretty sure we've been together ten years, right? Well, what is it? Actually, we missed our anniversary this year. Oh, did we really? Oh fuck, I'm in trouble. I missed the anniversary. Well, actually, it happened. Oh, okay. So I'm off the hook then. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, how long have we been together for? We together eleven years. Twelve. Twelve years. I no, I don't mind. I, I didn't mean that to sound like you know. Oh, twelve years. No, we. So we've been. So you said, yeah, yeah. So you said seven years, you guys haven't fought all that stuff. We've been together 12 years. We fought once. We fight more now that we have here. No, we don't, we don't really, fight. we don't fight. We don't fight. Anyways, we don't fight. We had one fight. Kira's my first child. I haven't had any before. I haven't had any since. We're in the hospital. Yeah, I'm going to tell the story. We're in the hospital. Erica had just given birth. They put us in a room, paid for the little fucking room they give you. Yeah. 
we're in there and they bring us in all this stuff, you know, formula, the whole nine yards. Erica didn't want to breastfeed anything like that. I said, you don't want to do whatever you want to do. It's all good. So we start formula feeding. Again, it's my first kid. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, man. I don't, I, I'm like, I don't even know how to change a diaper. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Anyways, they're like, you have to feed the child every, you know, few hours because they're newborn. So we're doing that and feeding her and feeding her and feeding her. And she would just puke it all up, man. And she wasn't keeping it down. And we're like, we got, we got discharged from the operating room at like six in the morning, six, six thirty in the morning, seven o'clock. And by like seven o'clock the next morning, Kira hadn't eaten, man. Like she, she would eat and, but she was puking it all up. She wasn't retaining anything. And bro, broke down. Cause I'm like, we're fucking horrible parents. I don't know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Losing it at her, she losing it at me. Fuck you, all this other stuff. We took a breath. We walked away. I went down for a smoke, I took a breath, come back up, apologize to each other. You know, we'll figure this out, we'll figure this out. I said, fuck this, I'm going to see a nurse. I go, I find the nurse, I bring the nurse down, she's the head nurse. And I'm like, she hasn't eaten, you guys are telling me that if she doesn't eat, we gotta stay another night. Erica wants to go home, she's had enough of the hospital. She's like, well, have you been, uh, have you been burping the baby? We're like, get the fuck out of here. No, we haven't been burping the baby. No. Buddy, I swear to God, the next like six hours, She'd eat, I'd burp her, she'd do a big burp, keep the food down. We were gone within like six hours from that. But it's, that not milk, it's not milk at that point. You feed them the... Like formula, like pablum or... or uh, no, we they made us do... Uh, what was it, Erica? Uh, Infamil? Yeah. yeah, Infamil. They made us do... Sorry, if the, this. I'm sorry, guys, if this is a little weird, but I don't know, the breast produces this some type of... Uh, it, it's before the milk comes. It's supposed to be really good for the baby. So we just, we gave them little syringes of that. Mm. It's from the female, like Jess didn't breastfeed or anything like that either, right? But yeah. uh, they made us do that. And it was, uh, I don't know, it was good. <laughs> did you burp colostrum. the baby at least? <laughs> colostrum, yeah. yeah. We burped the baby. She did all the, she read all the baby books and all that fun stuff. I didn't, I just kind of winged it yeah 100 percent. i was like oh yeah i know what i'm doing we're like that nah, we don't need baby books but yeah. I'll, I'll tell i'll tell a funny story jess might the wife might kill me for this but it's funny she's down there watching right now so <laughs> so it's it's our it's our first night there uh jacks was uh uh he came out yellow i forget what that's called but uh so when we held him Jaundice, yeah, he was he's yeah. very jaundiced. So when he came out, we had to wrap him. We couldn't go skin to skin. We had to wrap him in a special UV blanket so that the light would cure the jaundice. Mm -hmm. So he had to, we weren't even allowed to go skin to skin. Like that was like probably one of the hardest things in my life. Like your kid just pops out and you can't even hold him to your chest because he has to be wrapped in a fucking UV blanket. So... We're sleeping. We have this chamber in our room. It's a big chamber with UV lights that shine down on him. And he has these goggles over his eyes so it doesn't blind him. Yeah. So I'm sleeping. And then I hear, <laughs> Jess went to take Jax out of the chamber. And she was so tired. She fucking whacked his head off the top of the fucking chamber door. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck! I mean, it was it was. I'm sorry, everybody. It was it was funny, but your heart melted a little bit. I mean, he didn't even cry. He took it like a champ. Yeah, but, but you know, he, the amount he of still has a little a little dent on his fucking forehead from when yeah. she picked him up in the middle of the night. The fucking mess. That's awesome. Now uh, you know, in the first <laughs> in the first bit of parenthood, you know you know yourself. You're up. 24 48 hours straight like I, I couldn't sleep in the in the in the hospital so it's like know, they, they give you this little fucking i don't know a cot it's a pullout coach you got a cot the the pullout coach made me made me wish i pulled out at that point yeah. brother, <laughs> brother i wouldn't I, have to sleep on that shit i got a window sill i didn't get a cot oh <laughs> i swear i swear on my mother's grave i had a window sill 
I'm no, I would I would have told the woman to scoot over at that point and said, "All right, darling, I'm coming in with you." Yeah, well, I remember sleeping and kind of doing one of them eye wakey things. It looked like shit out of fucking alien, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm going back. I'm going back to sleep in the window." <laughs> yeah, but now here we are, uh, two and a half years later, and you know I. All that, I wouldn't give none of this up, man. I wouldn't give none of it up. I wouldn't give up my crew that I ride with. I wouldn't give up my kid and my wife and my job, none of it. I'm, I'm so yeah. happy to be where I'm at. I'm so happy to be around you. Um, I'm so happy to be around people as well in the industry, in Instagram side of it because I don't know. Buddy, I'm winging all this shit like I was winging my kid, man. You know? <laughs> Same here. I, I said I'm starting a podcast and I'm putting it on Spotify. Didn't even research anything, how to get on Spotify. But yeah. now I'm on Spotify and just got to fucking believe it and the shit will come true. I mean, it's not, I mean, fucking an average Joe Blow could go create a Spotify talking about his dick or something like that. But uh, I'm, I'm proud. Like I was in the truck today and I put on episode one with me and Diesel Billy and it was, it was cool. Like it, it was on my truck screen. You could see my logo and everything. And I was like. It was, it was like a proud moment. I know it's weird, but uh, fuck it. I, 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 it was a, it was like a, a moment of like, wow, I, I, I did that. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's super cool to do this. You know, keep it going, man, because it's, it, it, you're right. It's nice to see who's behind that Instagram handle and who's behind that helmet. You know, and I, I hope the fans appreciate it too. Just getting to know the guy that they, I mean, they see you usually depending how often you post, they see you every day, but all they get to see is you flying through a mud hole or you taking, I mean, everybody knows me as 902 Monster, Well, in uh, Out the Woods, Shane Nas actually asked me a question on his YouTube video. He's like, I got a question. Are you the 902 Green Monster or is your bike the 902 Green Monster? It's like, no, my, my bike is the 902 Green Monster. My name is Cody Mackler. I just drive the thing. Like, I feel like, yeah. Nobody really gives a shit about the rider too much. It depends who you are. Yeah. They just see your bike. That's a cool bike. I'm gonna, they don't, they're not following you for you, or they're just following you for your bike. It looks cool. You have good content. Yeah. But I'm trying to bring more light to the guy that's behind the bike, and I feel like that will bring – that'll bring – that'll make your followers love you that much more once they see yeah. who you are as a person, not just – how hard you send your bike or how much money you put in your bike. It's literally about you. It's yeah. about Blaze Jones, the man behind the machine. I want to know who you are. Fuck your bike. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. And you are honestly A1. You're one of the realest guys I met. I mean, we've only hung out like two or three times. Yeah. And but I consider you my. If you called me right now, and said I don't know someone's breaking in your house or you need me to watch your kid because your wife has an emergency, you have to take her to the hospital. Like I'd fucking I'd fly an hour in the truck just like that to come help you. And we've only met three times, so I appreciate that, brother. And you know, some I feel the same way. You know, I, I I maybe I've looked at you for the last little while, maybe on a little bit more of a pedestal. You know, your bike's clean, bro. Don't I don't give a fuck what anybody out here says. That fucking bike is insane, bro. The thing is mint, okay? But I didn't know you from Adam when I met you up in New Minas when we came up for that run. Did we was that really the first time me and you met? No, it wasn't New Minas. It was uh Kenneth. Remember I forget. No, it was that that cold ride we did at the start of winter. We parked at James' friend's house. That was the first that's ride right, we met. That's right. That's right. So it was that. Yeah, one. I don't that know was... where we were, but yeah. but even 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 that though. I don't judge you by your bike. I like we we keep saying all this, but I don't judge you by your bike. I judge a guy that comes into a new group. Everybody knows each other. And instead of just going, you know, I'm just going to talk to Hero ATV or I'm just going to talk to Lariah or I'm just going to talk. Yeah, like the bigger, yeah. the bigger followers that everybody. 100%. Knows. It's yeah. like, 
who's this guy? Oh, that's Blaze. Hey, what's going on, man? I'm I'm Cody. And then like that one handshake is like, okay, the rest of the day, you know, hey man, how you, you know, whatever, right? Like starting the conversation with everybody in the group and making everybody feel involved. I look at that over, I have this or I can do that on my bike. Do you know what I mean? And you did that from day one with me. So I like instantly I'm like, all right, cool. He's, he's part of the group, right? And in all honesty, Cody, like you, you can ask probably anybody that knows me. Um, once, once I click with you, once I say I like you, it's like you, you say, you say to me that you drive an hour to come watch my kid. I drive five to come watch yours. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. hundred percent. Drop the done two o'clock in the morning. It, I got it, 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 it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's very neutral. Just, uh, yeah. Like I said, it's crazy how this, uh, this ATV thing works or like, yeah, we're, I consider us family. Like you're my brother from another mother. Like literally like, don't mean to get all mushy. I'm not going to yeah. suck your dick or anything. Hey, here, the but, end uh, of the podcast <laughs> and they kissed. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week where they might take their pants off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, Cody already showed Blaze's cock. <laughs> but one, one thing, uh, I get a lot of is people message me and I'm sure you get messages too. Like, Oh, I want to come riding with you guys, but I only have a Honda 100 or I only have a player. I don't, I feel like I won't fit in. Like we don't, we don't give a shit what you drive. No. As long as you're a good person, we're not going to leave you behind. We're not going to speed off without you. No, we don't care what you drive. You, you don't have to play in all the mud holes we play in. Like we have lots of guys in a crew that don't play in mud. Yeah. They're literally just there to hang out with us, ride the trails. I mean, it's, and have a good time. I don't care. Yeah. That, I, as long as you're a good person, I don't, I don't give a shit what you drive, man. Like just hundred percent. Yeah, c- Come on out. Like, we're not going to make fun of you for your bike or we don't even look at that. We look no. at you as a person. Yeah. You, if you come out, if you come out or we come out to you and you start acting all kinds of a fool and acting like an asshole, you know, that's then, a, then, yeah, what, that, what, that's you. What, what you bring to the table, at least for, I'm just talking our crew. I'm just talking if, if the 902 green monster or if red double XTP or if the Oracle or if any of us, James, Megan, Tyler, Raya, Mass, Jim, D- D- Dylan, Cody, Blaze, Erica. If any of us come out with you and you're an asshole, then you get what we bring after that. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, if we don't want to. Then no, you, you know why you're, you weren't invited out with us again. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you, you just, if you say, yeah, li- listen, uh, shout out to Dirty Delilah. Uh, Dirty Delilah on Instagram, man. He's been following my account since I fucking opened the thing. And you know what? I feel like an asshole. Dirty Delilah, if you're watching this, my bad. I need to get a ride. He's in New Brunswick. I think pretty sure New Brunswick. I could be wrong. But we should go out for a ride to New Brunswick. We should invite him out. He's a young kid. From what I can see, he's he's got a level head. And Do you know where in New Brunswick? Is it Moncton? No, I'd have, to, I'd have to talk to him, right? But he keeps saying, it's it's exactly what you're saying. He said to me once, you know, I'd love, fuck, I'd really love to come ride with you guys, but, you know, I don't do all the mud stuff like that. And I'm like, listen, like, <laughs> same thing you just said. That doesn't matter. You can just come. Like, we'll, we can come out to you. From, do you know of any mud spots? We'll go hit them. You come with us and have You just sit and, there and watch. And hang out. Get some wicked photos for your Instagram or for whatever you want to do. Just come out and hang out, you know? Um, but, yeah, so, sorry, I... My bike's fucked up. I, I can't really do much right now. But we'll get we'll get it going one of these days. But but a hundred percent. If if there's if there's somebody out there in Nova Scotia or anywhere that wants to ride, man, and you got a Honda or you got whatever, like come ride. But you know, we give respect for what respect is given to us. Do you know what I mean? I mean but you can I, have a you can have a hundred thousand dollar bike, like the baddest bike in the fucking world, but if you're a wreck, yeah. we're we're not gonna you won't be invited back out with us. We're not going to hang out with you if you're all like 100%. me, 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 me. Hundred percent humbleness. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay humble, man. Like you, I, I have my bike the way it is because I like the look of it and I like the power it has. And I don't do it to impress you. 
I do it because it's fucking, when I'm on that thing and I'm hitting that throttle, I'm like, my fucking heart's coming out of my chest. You know what I mean? And I, it's almost like an addiction. I like that. But if you, if you're a good person, man, you're going to get, you're going to get far. You're going to get far with us. You're going to get far in life. I believe it. I believe it. I, I come from, I come from a bad background, man. I come from, you know, I, I ruined my life a couple times and, and here I am on the other side of it. And, you know, I was negative back then and I'm positive now. And, you know, but you're you're kind of like me in that sense that you transferred that that negative into positive. I mean, uh, I have a very addictive personality. I used to be a I used to be a bodybuilder and compete. And um, if anybody follows me on my actual account, you can look back. I was eight pack traps up to here, biceps up to here. I was I was very. Ad- I have an addictive personality, so when I do something, it has to be balls to the wall. So I got on a lot of steroids, and mm-hmm. I almost lost. If my wife wouldn't have, or my dad actually is the one that sat me down and told me to get my shit together, because if not, I wouldn't have my kid, and I wouldn't have my wife. Because mm-hmm. I was I was very hard into the drugs, and that's all I did was work, gym, inject work gym and jack and i just wanted to be the best bodybuilder in the world and i kind of I, but i transferred that over to my bike which is why uh i put as much money into it as i do because if i didn't have this i know i'd be spending that money elsewhere and it wouldn't be positive where that money would be going mm-hmm. And I get I get mistaken as cocky a lot, but it's not cocky. It's I I call it proud because mm-hmm. I nothing's handed to me. I, this isn't Daddy's bike. Daddy mm-hmm. didn't buy me my bike. I'm not handed money left, right, and set. I, I work my ass off for my money, and I put it into what I love. Mm-hmm. So I I call it I'm I'm proud because that's money I work for, and that's where I put my money, and I'm, I'm proud of it. It's not me being cocky. It's it's me just being happy and proud of what I own. Mm-hmm. But no, I, uh, yeah, I was like you. I, I, I almost ruined my life a couple of times and almost lost my wife and my kid a couple, a couple of times. And it, I, I believe ATVing saved me because if it wasn't for ATVing, I'd be right back to where I was and shout out to my wife for uh, sticking with me through a lot of, uh, a lot of very, very hard times because I treated her like shit when I was on steroids. And I apologize for that. It wasn't who I am. But now here we are, kid, happy. Shout, shout out to the wives that stuck around with shout a couple. Out to the wives, shout out to the wives that us. stuck around with a couple of fucking degenerates, right? I was right just here, about right to here, say, right thank here. you, right? right? you guys oh, are right here to the wives, to the wives, to the wives. Because right? yeah, I'm an absolute putting up with our fucking bullshit because they, yeah. all their friends were telling them, yeah. you. What are you doing? That guy's a piece of shit. You got to leave him. And they're like, no, he's okay. He's, he's just going through some things. Shout out to the wives for holding it out and just being patient. <laughs> yeah. Cody, I'm going to break the seal here a little bit. I wasn't going to smoke this entire fucking, this entire thing. But I don't know I, how you're not. I've been watching you just go to town on them. And I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. What? I got the light on. I know it's dark out here. Hopefully I don't. Here, one, one, one second. I need I need ten seconds. I've had four beer and I need to piss. Mm-hmm. You you just talk to the people. Keep them occupied. Keep the people occupied. Okay, people. Yep. Yeah. Welcome to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Let's see what some of the comments are saying. Wait, can you still hear me from out here? I can. Yeah, you. Pro- I better not be able to hear you pissing. Oh, you definitely can. Hi, I'm Mike. Hey, what's up, Mike? Yeah, uh, anybody that's watching, uh, throw some questions in the comments. And we'll, uh, we'll answer. This, the, my, uh, Mike Dakin, you need a real skeg machine like an Arctic cat. Honest to fuck, we have a buddy, uh, Brad Brooks. Call him Brooksy. And he's got an Arctic cat. <laughs> wild. He's got an Ar- yeah, he's got that Arctic cat wildcat, man. And uh, I'll tell you right now, that thing hauls ass on trail and in mud. And and there's some videos on probably my my Instagram or maybe even Cody's. I'm not sure if he has from that day. But uh, 
Yeah, his Arctic cat, it, it flies, but Nothing wrong with an old kitty cat, bud. No. Nothing wrong with an old kitty cat. Oh, those AirPods are sweet. I just went to a piss. Talk to you guys the whole time. Why did yours work and mine won't? <sighs> what do you mean? Well, I tried to put mine in and they were making it all fucked up. I don't know. These are these are dads. I found them in his truck and I uh, decided I'm going to use them tonight because I didn't want to use the cord the whole time. Yeah. They're uh, the pro version, I think. He uses them for conference calls and shit, so I just snag them and I'll put them back when I'm done. <laughs> uh, my buddy RJ's in here. RJ Jennings. What's up, RJ? It's my buddy who's out working with me today. Well, not with me. He was lashing or something. The mud hole sniper's in here. <laughs> Is he? Is he actually yes. in here? Yes. Yes, okay. it says well, mud hole sniper joined. Good. Wait. Ty, Ty. Oh, he's not, he's not here anymore. Oh, okay. Oh, it's Ty, you just broke my fucking heart. I was going to talk sweet to you. We got Chris Costiff in here. My wife, we still got Backcountry Power Sports in here. And that's, a, that's a sponsor right there. Watch through the whole video, supporting his sponsored rider. Shout out Backcountry Power Sports. Hit him up if you want the best deal on RJWC. Just in case you're looking, Blaze, and if you want, uh, you know, some neutrinos or some bar or some uh, Where's that? RJWC halos or something, you know, just 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 hit him up and like, hit, where, tell him to tell him we're friends. Where's he located at? Uh, he's Port Hawkesbury, Nova Scotia, so he's about five hours away from me, four hours away from you. Okay, still, so, yeah, I, I definitely uh, I'd like to hit him up because uh, when I do get all the actual, um, all the 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 actual functionable parts done on the bike i'm gonna want to do some uh some fancy stuff and i and actually my taillights are out and i might need a set of neutrinos hint 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 no I'm, that's what i'm doing next because I, I can't hit a mud hole without my taillights falling out and then just sagging there like yeah 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 just gotta i gotta save up some money all my all my money is going towards this gag tober trip right now Mm -hmm. gas and hotel and liquor liquor is you know, liquor and smokes are the most expensive part of this trip honestly 100 <laughs> percent, but way she goes outlandish, she goes. outlandish xmr is in here my boy devin what's up baby dev he's no he ain't oh yeah he is dev should be on a date with a hot little tinder thing from down down peggy's cove or dartmouth maybe even uh Scarborough, not smooth. Oh, I said the wrong fucking thing. I was trying to think of the most ratchet place in Halifax, and I, I forgot what it was. He probably just got back from the Timberley Tavern. <laughs> the Seahorse Tavern, yeah. bud. Seahorse, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was this was fun, Cody. I was honestly, I won't even lie to you, I was a little bit nervous. Cause, and, and you know something? You, you got the one and only time that I've ever really put my face on Instagram. Well, I appreciate you taking one for the team. I mean, you're no Ryan Reynolds, but you're a good-looking dude, man. Hey, thanks, man. You know, I, I try. You should have seen me about five hours ago. I, the fucking beard was out like that. Fucking, it was bad. It was really bad. I was looking I mean, crazy. I know I'm a solid six, but I'm I'm funny, so I, I, I got a ten in a wife. I'm batting way out of my league. I'm playing, I'm playing AHL fourth line yeah. and somehow banging – the fucking star forward to the Toronto Maple Leafs first line center captain of the team. Uh, it's weird, but yeah, I make it work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not over here complaining. No, no, no. Dad bod and everything. I don't give a fuck. I just say it's because I own a can am. <laughs> she liked to look at the can am bud. That's how I got her. And then you look at me, and if I turn sideways, I'd fall through the a crack in the floor. But sorry, but I couldn't fit my pinky toe down that crack. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been going for two hours now, Blaze, and I could talk to you all night. But I gotta get up at four a.m. and wait and uh, catch trial birds, and it'll take too long to upload this to YouTube if we keep on going. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know something. At least, at least the 
the audio worked out other than the first couple minutes or whatever? And nothing, nothing cut out. I've been screen recording the whole time in case that happened like last week. Yeah. So I'm still screen recording. I'm going to send it off to uh, Shane uh, out the woods. Shout out uh, out the woods for uh, he's been turning my uh, my videos in MP3 files so I can up, upload them to Spotify. Yeah. He's also going to make it when I upload to YouTube. It's not uh, vertical. It'll be horizontal because if you watch my latest podcast on my YouTube at 902 Degree Monster, it's going to look all fucked up. So he's going to start editing them for me because – I don't know if people know this, but I do all of my edits, my YouTube videos, my, my podcast, my everything off my iPhone. I do not have yeah. a computer. It gets yeah. very complicated. And the fact that he was willing to help me out for, I offered to pay him. He said, absolutely not, bro. I got you. That shows right there, the ATV community. Helping yeah. one another out. Yeah. I only met him one time, but he helped me out. So, uh, Gain, please. Gain's an awesome dude. Yeah, if you want to shout anybody out, do it now, my man. So right off the hop, I'm gonna I'm gonna say names first, and then we can do the Instagram thing. James Forbes, Megan Little, Devin Slam White, uh, Matthew Smith, Laria, Ty, my brother Matt Fenton, my brother Tef West, uh, Colton, uh, Dylan, Dylan Public Cover. Uh, all these guys, you got to check them out on Instagram. Uh, 902 Green Monster, right off the hop. You know, my brother. Um, you know, this is this has been awesome. Also, I want to shout out to, uh, oh, come on, Blaze. Hatrick Swayze. So, Hatrick Swayze on Instagram. He's the guy that made my new logo. Uh, you need any logo work done, I'm sure you got guys and all that kind of good stuff, but... I'm telling you, this guy does not fuck around. He's a good dude, fairly priced. He's out of Nova Scotia too, so it's it's hits home for me. He's he's dope, um, and yeah, just you know the fam, man. We that's what we do. We we stick together. Our crew sticks together, real tight, and uh, yeah, you'll you'll see us out there. No worry, we're we're getting on the map, man. We're, yeah. we're it's, it's almost time for us to create. Uh, an actual group with all of us in it for an Instagram group and the crew from the 902 or I won't say the other name because I don't want anybody to steal it. We're not going to use the crew from the 902, yeah. but there is another name we all know. It was in our group chat and yeah. we're just waiting for uh, Matt to become a little less, uh, a little less busy with his house renovations and, and all that stuff. And uh, I hope we get that going because uh, yeah, our crew is absolutely incredible and, we deserve to be uh, on the map, and yeah, man. people need to see what we're doing, work as a team. And I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, and if I am, I apologize. Do you have any – what about that uh, – your, your sponsor, man? Uh, I don't oh. Know if you're still work, I don't know if you're still working with them, but when you up. said you got sponsored and you said what they do, it was uh, it was heartwarming. So I'd like you to it, shout them out. It's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty small sponsor for, like, if, if you're thinking, like, fin trails and all that it's nothing really to do with the atv community but uh get the fuck yeah out. but what what they're doing man is, it's, it's it's amazing, amazing. It, it, it's it's way above what other companies are doing it's not just bike parts it, it's it's way beyond that so i'll let you go so uh at get the fuck outside gtf gtfs outside or uh, it, it, search up get the fuck outside on instagram uh these guys are out of alberta um all their profits go towards people with mental health issues um, and shit like that. They got some really cool merchandise, really cool, uh, you know, shirts, hats, whatever. It's an amazing cause. They do a live every, uh, I believe it's every Tuesday or every second Tuesday or something like that. Um, they talk to the sponsors. Anybody can, anybody can kind of get sponsored with these guys. Um, I, I unfortunately am sounding like an asshole here, but I haven't, I haven't bought any of their merchandise yet, but I've been super busy and family and you know how it is, but, uh, yeah. but an amazing company, man. They, you know, I, I told them my story of, you know, we haven't really gotten into it here, but what I went through in the last little bit, maybe that'll be another video, but, um, amazing company. They're, they're all about mental health. If you went through some shit, it's a place you can stop and you can talk to some real people that went through the same kind of shit as you. And, you know, you won't feel so alone up there. Right. Cause 
as you know, like at least for us guys, we don't really talk about all that kind of stuff. And it, it's frowned upon. You're taught from a young age that if you're a male, push that shit down, yeah. bury it, get deep over down. It. Don't show weakness. If you show weakness, you're a pussy. Yeah. But uh, we've all been through very. I don't care who you are. You've been through hardships, yeah. and you felt like you can't talk to people because it makes you look weak. And for companies to be reaching out. And I'm doing a dirty old porn stash for Movember this year. I want to raise some money now that I have a, a half decent following. So, yeah, bye bye beard come uh, come uh, Movember because uh, yeah, it, uh, I believe that just anything that involves men's mental health because there's always I guarantee there's somebody in your life right now that's going through some shit. Yeah, maybe you know, but I guarantee they will not reach out to you because they don't want you to think of them as any less of a man. Yeah, so. Uh, Hundred percent, and I'll say this right now: you can ask any one of my followers. If you reach out to me, I me I message you back. There's nothing in my requests. Yeah. There's no messages in my. If you reach out to me, if you are someone going through a hard time, reach out to me, man. I, yeah. I'm a busy guy, but I I will take the time out of my day to talk to you. Yeah. Because it could save a life one day, and even if it's not about mental health, if it's anything that's going on in your life, your yeah. bike. Anything you reach out to me, I'm going to reach out to you. I'm not – I love interacting with followers. I love talking to people. I, just the fact that people reach out and want to talk to you, it, it's heartwarming. It makes your day when someone reaches out to you and says, oh, your bike's so sick. Can we talk? What should I do to my bike? Like, Yeah. I mean, it, it's – like we're, I said, it's like nothing else I've ever experienced in my fucking life. You and I, we're not bots. We're actual people on Instagram that enjoy doing what we do. And I, I'm the same as you. You send me a message, I'm going to answer it. And I have like this weird thing in my head that if my phone goes off, I have to answer it. So, you know, I'm always here to talk. You know, I do agree. I'm Green Monster's always here to talk. And, uh, and yeah. But you're totally right. It's 9.07. My, my kids in there supposed to be giving me hugs and kisses about an hour ago. And I'm going to pay for this later, just so you know. <laughs> well, luckily, uh, I ship my kid off. Uh, all my family's from uh, New Brunswick, so they don't get to see him that much. So yeah. my kid is shipped off for the next 10 days, six hours away with his grandmother in New Brunswick, visiting all the family up there. I wasn't uh, able to go because it was my weekend to work, and I work every day. But, uh, no, he's up there having the time of his life, getting spoiled like crazy. And uh, me and the wife have a little bit of uh, – alone time so uh yeah she ain't gonna be pg-13 this uh, podcast turns off i'm just gonna say keep it pg-13 for now and then yeah no no uh we might have another little mackler coming here uh yeah. <laughs> after this podcast you don't know yeah. you guys might have just witnessed something here <laughs> but uh i'll i'll do a little bit of shout outs because we really do gotta wrap this up uh shout out mr noodle because uh, without you, I wouldn't be fed because all my money goes to my bike and my kid. So, <laughs> no, but all seriousness, uh, I'll do a couple shout outs to my, uh, some of my supporters. Uh, I'm not sponsored by all these guys, but uh, uh, I don't need to be. I'll never shout out a company because they're big. I don't care how many followers the company has. It's, uh, if I love your product. I'm going to promote your product. I'm going to buy your product. Nothing on my bike uh, has been given to me. So everything on my bike is bought and paid for. If I love it, I'm going to tell you I love it. If I hate it, I'm going to tell you I hate it. Because if I tell you I love it and it's absolute shit, you're going to come back at me and say, what the fuck, man? If the product is shit, it's not going on my bike. But these people I'm going to shout out now are make amazing products, have amazing companies, and I'll support them until i am done so first off handful shout out fleer uh his gloves are unmatched uh i just started buying his uh sunglasses i uh i dropped pit viper because they didn't do anything for me so um we're um supporting handful now uh fleeter's an awesome guy i can't wait to meet him in person uh friday Oh, I'm so excited to meet those guys. I can't contain it. <laughs> Don't look down here. For fuck's sakes. It's starting to pop up. It's 10. 
<laughs> but uh, no, shout out handful. Uh, shout out Demon Power Sports. Uh, they actually put me on a small sponsorship deal when I only had 300 followers. Now, usually, if you don't have any followers, you reach out to a company. They're gonna they're gonna just blow you off, or they won't even answer the call. So, uh, shout out to Demon Power Sports. They've been with me since uh, since day one, and uh, they finally signed me because I, I I showed I showed them that I'm here to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out Far Mudding, another company that uh, was there for me since I had I think I had a hundred followers when Far Mudding gave me a promo code for their website and everything like that. So they seen the potential and they just uh, they took a chance and I I. I'll, I'm in their debt forever because that was uh, that was very big for me to uh, work with a company as good as them. Best Halos on the market. Uh, Demon Power Sports, Lee Murray, uh, just a local shop down the road. Uh, same same thing. Day one, he's my day one guy. He was my first ever sponsor. He did all my engine work on my bike, all my tuning on my bike, so many things on my bike. And he, I mean, him and his wife just stayed up from 7 p.m. till 3 a.m., didn't charge me a thing, and installed my wrap. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is just – that that's good people right there. And uh, uh, my newest sponsor, shout out Backcountry Power Sports. I mean, I met this guy in a parking lot. It kind of goes back to the ATV community thing. You meet somebody, and, I mean, I met him, and we talked for fucking two hours in a Tim Hortons parking lot. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just, he's just, he's amazing. And he does so much charity work in Port Hawkesbury for local hockey teams and, and, and just so much stuff like that. And he's literally just, he's a hard working dad like me and you. And this is a side job. He, he works 40, 50 hours a week supporting his family. And this is what he does on the side. So if you're around Port Hawkesbury, Nova Scotia, and you're looking to get some work done to your bike and, you don't really have the money to go. I've been there. I'm still there. I will not take my bike to a dealer because I'm not paying over $100 an hour for somebody to work on it. I'm, I don't have that kind of money. I'm sorry. Yeah. But go hit up this guy. He charges half, half the price of the dealer, same as Lee Murray, and hit up either one of them, wherever you're closest to. They will work on your bike, and you're supporting – a hard working family man. That money is going into his pocket, into his kids' mouths, paying his bills. You're not supporting some massive company that doesn't really care if you come visit them or not. This guy this guy's really good shit and uh he's also an RJWC dealer. So if you're looking for anything RJWC, tell him I sent you. You might just sweeten the deal a little bit. Just yeah. don't don't tell anybody I said that though. Don't don't, yeah. don't tell anybody I said that. But uh yeah, hit him up for anything RGWC. He'll ship wherever you need it, and I guarantee he will he will blow your mind. I mean, I got rid of my empires just like that mm-hmm. with the price he got me for my RJs. So mm-hmm. I believe that is everything. Uh, yeah, I don't have anybody else I really want to shout out today. One last thing. Uh, I got stickers for you coming. I got stickers. I've got a couple people in my DMs on Instagram. I got stickers. 30, 32 new stickers and a handful of the old OG stickers coming. I got you some stickers. I got stickers for you, stickers for other people that I've already been talking to, a couple family, you know, James and them guys, but I got you some stickers. And also, uh, you guys are hearing this here first. Don't tell anybody, but uh, I'm in the works of uh, – I got uh, my girl working on a bunch of hats for you guys. Uh I'm also getting some shirts made with the 902 Green Monster logo on the front and uh, some of my sayings on the back. It'll either – I'll make both shirts. One one shirt will be uh, on the back. It'll be, if at first you don't succeed, just hit her with some fucking speed. I'll probably have to scratch out the fucking and just say hit her with some speed. Yeah. PG, I don't know. But then my other saying will be uh, on the back of the shirt will be, it's time for caffeine, nicotine, and giving her the beat. Yeah. So uh, just let everybody know when you buy my stickers or you buy that stuff, I'm not making a profit off it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got to pay for the shirt. I got to pay for the, for the embroidery. I got to pay for the shipping. 
I'm not even breaking even. It's I'm doing this because I love my followers and they support me. And it just, yeah, it'd just be awesome to have those shirts on the backs of my followers, just seeing people there that support you. Uh, yeah, so that's all in the works. The, sh- the shirts are ordered. Stay tuned. The k and gang's going to get hooked up big time. Uh, yeah, just uh, it's going to be awesome. Don't big, fuck, big, big things, big things coming, man. I, I love this shit, and uh, I'll be doing this well into my 50s. That's how much I love it. So I appreciate all my all my day one followers, all my day one friends that you knew. They were there for you, right? They, yeah. they weren't. They weren't there for the clout. You can tell a clout chaser when you see a fucking clout chaser. Yeah. I mean, like, if I would have went on that trip with you guys, and I would have just been hanging out with Matt and Lariah because they had more followers, you guys would have spotted me out like fucking. Hundred percent. I mean, that's why I went on the trip though, is because I I watched these guys and they were my inspiration to get started. So obviously, I was. I was sitting there like a teenager meeting Justin Bieber, like this fucking freaking out on the inside. Right. But, yeah. uh, no, it, I was just, it turned into, uh, literally a, a family. Yeah. And I, I, I love you to death, blaze. I love if the K&M gang is listening or is going to listen, I love you guys to death. I would literally take a bullet for you. Unless the bullet was directed at my son, I wouldn't take a bullet for you, Yeah. but I'd literally take a bullet for any of you guys. And, uh, Thank love, you very much. I love you too, brother. <laughs> it's bedtime, isn't it? Yes. Hey, uh, Daddy's got to tuck you in, doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All right, Blaze. Thank you very much, brother. I, right, brother. I, I truly appreciate Dylan, you, any of my friends that are coming on this podcast starting out just until I get my feet underneath me. Yeah. Uh. You guys didn't have to do this. I mean, you, you just took two and a half hours out of your night with your daughter and your wife to do this with me. And I, oh, I, I'll i never be able to thank you enough for helping me get this started, you and Dylan and whoever else might come on this podcast. I, I love you guys to death, and thank you. Got you. I got you. Anytime you ever do anything else, you know I always got you. All right, Blaze, man. We'll be talking. All right, uh, all right, everybody. That was episode two of the Behind the Bars podcast with Blaze Jones or Red Devil XTP. I'll see you next week on Sunday. Don't know who it'll be yet. I imagine it'll be an in-person interview with Grim Knight, but we'll see what we can do. I love you all. Blaze, I fucking love you to death, brother. Love Have you. a good night. You too. Good night, you beautiful little girl. Peace.